You all right? Yeah. I mean, I know it's a little nerve wracking. This is your very is this your very first podcast? It is. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And Evan, you've been on. This is my second podcast. Has it only been two? Oh, okay. God, has it been a whole week since I've seen you? It's been a week and a day. It was last Wednesday, right? No. I think really? so. I'm pretty sure. Wow. Time flies, dude. <laughs> Honestly, time flies yeah. so much. Honestly, like this whole week's been really quick. It's just um, like I hate. Okay, so I really hate the conversations where you either talk about the weather, um, time, or just any of that really shallow, low-level BS because mm-hmm. I think it's just a waste. Oh man, September is going by pretty fast. Okay, well, sure, perception is reality, but I, I are we are we on right now? Oh yeah, we're on. Oh, okay, I just cool. Figured we can. So I guess this is the part where we say welcome back to the one more podcast podcast. I mean, I usually say that, but you can I go mean, ahead. but I already stole it. That's so. true. All right. Well, uh, to anybody who's listening, <laughs> welcome back to the one more podcast podcast. Welcome back to the one more podcast podcast. I uh, am uh, sorry, not your host. I and I am your host, <laughs> uh, Yuval. Um, and I have with me a special duo. Um, you might call them lovers. You might call them friends. Uh, uh, you I might call them just lovers. roommates. I prefer the term heterosexual life partners. Ah, yes. Okay. It's the very almost gay way of saying best friends there you go yeah so and who do i have with me here i'm evan and i am also evan all right yeah together we are e squared we are e squared that is true (laughs) um who started that by the way was that you guys or think because i because i remember back in middle school i think we referred to you as e squared right i think i I coined the term i'm not sure though pretty sure you did yeah it was either you or somebody else i don't know oh okay (laughs) May have been Brendan though. It's definitely could something have. he could you have think said. So? Yeah, maybe. I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's um, been so long, so you know. Have you have you not talked to him at all? Brendan? No, no. I I talked to Brendan still. It's just been long since we started going by E squared. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh, okay. Well, let's bring it back. I don't even know. Eh. I mean, I guess we could bring it back. Yeah. Um, uh, this guy doesn't like E squared. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of cheesy. Well, what would you That's refer to part. yourself as? I mean, I would normally just go by Evan. As as much as we're generally around each other, there's really no point in weird couple names when, well, as previously emphasized, we're not a couple. Well, speaking Hello, of couple, we are E squared. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Would you rather do E squared, Ev Ev, or N N? I'd rather oh, have E squared. <laughs> <laughs> those those choices, other two are really yeah. shitty. <laughs> yeah, Ev Ev N N. Oh, or better yet, you can combine the first half of my name and, and the, the last, last half, half of his name, and it's. <laughs> Evan. Evan. Wow. That's true. Just Holy a, crap. One unique, How crazy uh, is that? We are Evan. We are. <laughs> Let's not talk about that this for the awesome. next two okay. and a half hours. <laughs> hold on. Hold, no, we're about to talk about this for the next seven hours. Um, <laughs> All right. I would love to just see a band and just literally everyone's the same name. So just either if the drummer, the bassist, the lead guitar, rhythm guitar, and the singer, and all at once, just and we are Evan. And all right the so evan we we need to find okay i know evan campbell plays instruments yeah probably so you need to uh, get him on need, was there any other evans we need a fourth evan okay that isn't i'm sure dick. we can find one just post <laughs> online we need another <laughs> evan it doesn't we matter. need another evan that knows how to play instruments slash sing <laughs> yeah. yeah well i mean i mean you guys given sing, my right? skill set probably would need a guitarist i guess because probably yeah guitarist or bassist whichever is well, I don't know what Campbell plays actually. So wait, hold on. Wait, you play guitar? No. Why? What? Do you, what? What, <laughs> what instruments do you play? I don't. That's my point. Well, weren't you in band? Singer here. Yeah, I play a saxophone. There you go. I, I could run that. Yeah. Dude, saxophone. Dude, we'll get like sixteen Evans and we'll have a giant <laughs> Evan ska band. That would be <laughs> dude. Really holy awesome. moly! I would, lo- okay. I would love that. Okay, to everybody listening, if you can help us find people with the first name Evan that either sing, play guitar, or bass, or drums, or trumpet, or trombone, or saxophone. Or bass trombone or berry saxophone, let me know. Yo, just hook us up. This Send is us important. An email, DM, anything. If like you're that. willing to get your name legally changed to be a part of this project, I, you are willing. You are more than the happy Evan project. You are far more uh, like into this than we are. So that, go well, to you, maybe man. you. That'd maybe you. <laughs> this is my life's goal. I would man. love. Honestly, if there was a band called the Evan Project, I would love that. That would just be amazing. Well, I'm copywriting it right now. Okay, tell me the difference between a copyright and a trademark. Go. Evan, go. All right. Um, I'm not. I'm pretty sure that a copyright. You over studied something... this, Evolved. This is cheating. <laughs> what? No, I. This, um, there's a guy that covered it, and I was just like, oh yeah. No, I don't. I really don't know for sure off the top of my head. If I were to just spitball it, I would say that a copyright is a little more all-encompassing. Like, <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> 
All right. Okay. Copyright. Copyright, right. me and then you all. Copyright refers to any type of art or intellectual property, visually speaking. Um, so any kind of movies, paintings, pictures, whatever, um, those where you get copyrights. Trademarks uh, generally refer to phrases or words or specific distinctions. So Coca-Cola is trademark. Mm-hmm. The Coca-Cola bottle is copyrighted. Oh, okay. So. That makes sense. I, I had figured that a trademark would be more of like a name or a phrase. Or yeah, something like, like a that, brand or something I like that. I was a little fuzzier on copyright. So the Evan Project Experience 3000, is that a... That's a... That's a trademark. Trademark? Okay. And then the picture of your band logo would be... Is the copyright. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Okay. Best idea ever. So yeah. what, what was the name of the band? The Evan... The Evan Project Experience 3000. 3000. Yeah. And then the first uh, album cover would just be all 16 Evans naked doing the finger pointing guns. Dude, and I'm just down. all back to back to back to back to back. Just the finger... I'm doing the gun hand thing. I am so down. That would be amazing. I would love that. Really? Would something. you? Okay, hold on. Would you do like serious music or like jokey music? I mean, if you're a ska band, you're already basically jokey. But it really, just... that's offensive. I mean, I don't listen to ska just... music, so I wouldn't know. I mean, have you ever heard it's like more a stylistic thing? Then, um, uh, what's a good example? I don't know. What is a good example? I'm trying to think. <laughs> what what popular <laughs> ska bands are there? There used to be a lot. Like, do you know the song Superman by Goldfinger? How does it go? Sing it for me. No, wrong Superman. I think that's actually Jurassic Park. Okay, no, here's one. Yeah, that is Jurassic Park. 99 Red Balloons. Oh, that's... That's ska music. Really? Yeah. I thought that was like German poppy music. Well, the original is German and poppy. Yeah. Oh. But if you've never heard the remix version... Or I guess the version that know. everyone hears. What which is, is the sing it for me? No, I don't know what scat version you think everyone. <laughs> no, hears. you know what? I'm thinking of scat. Who does scat? What are scat? That's bands? like that's like the scat man. Yeah, it's like the bleep yeah. blah 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 blah. Yeah, that, blah, that's blah, that's blah, that's, yeah. that's scat. But no, like, not to be confused with the weird fetish porn. Ah, I yeah. don't know. Have you ever scat porn? Is that a thing? Uh, no. Oh really? Okay. I don't, I don't know. How I about mean, you? I just no. you, you haven't pitched in on this one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding in the corner. No, no input on that one either. I All right, so I think we can officially say that the Evan, the Evan Project Extreme Experience, 3, experience, 3, experience 3, 3000 is officially coming out at the end of the year. I'm first hoping album. so. Yeah, hoping oh, so. Right. Uh, we, we've been working maybe, pretty hard maybe on it. In spring, the last... if we have trouble finding other Evans. Yeah, That's yeah. true. Yeah, I mean, how, really, how it just really comes down three, to the recruiting process. Is pretty short and... to, to fill in an entire group. <laughs> I mean, well, we need 14 more Evans. So we're pretty far off. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, Evan, you're like pretty. You'll, you'll probably have the better, best experience trying to recruit Evans. Just when you're ringing people up at Target, just be like, "Hey, is your name Evan? <laughs> Do you well, want to come join our band?" <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, I would be probably be like, "I don't think that Evan less than me. a week." So, oh, really? Not a thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, he's coming to work with me. Wait, so you quit Target? I am going to be quitting. Yeah, I got my last two Whoa. shifts tomorrow and Saturday. Oh, so you already put your two weeks? Yep. Okay, that's what why you're leaving alex money yeah alex has complained about it are you lot. serious oh okay. yeah <laughs> wait okay hold on so i don't because we we actually mentioned you very briefly because we talked about target for like the first 20 minutes of the podcast it's always we always got to talk about target um and so uh do you do electronics at all or no yeah oh you do okay all right cool cool cool, cool. so then why leave you got like video games and music well and stuff. the the short answer is a part-time job that is 20 minutes down a highway from where i'm living right now it's just it's just not feasible for wait actually... where do you guys you're up 75 uh no no, no. We south live... 75 no north se- well he said no, up not a... 75 at all what, that's where target is off mcdermott 75 there's like a billion targets but... there's not a, a lot of targets, targets. But we, that, we live that one's on, on mcdermott and 75 on... excuse me sir there's probably only 7382 <sighs> targets I'm looking it up. Good for it. Go. But I don't um, think there's seven thousand. I mean, we don't want to tell everyone where you live, but like Never general mind. direction. I read on a yeah, brochure that there's like I think. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. The colony is not a road, but sure. I know where yeah, you are. Yeah, it's in the colony. A one twenty one off of Frisco. Yeah, it's yeah. on. It's on Sam <laughs> Rayburn. Parallel, parallel to Galveston. It is on Sam Rayburn, just about at the. Ugh. Do you do you use yeah. do, you, do you use their actual names? Not often. Of, one with one twenty one in that particular toll way i found out how many targets there are how many targets 1802 are you serious yeah i was way off but you were even way i mean i said billions so i was pretty off you're like super i was a couple billion off (laughs) (laughs) but um that would be that would be how many did you say earlier like tens of billions yeah yeah Yeah, just a couple couple more target stores than people you got yeah 
That, that, that sounds about right. Isn't that what the world's <laughs> going to become with Amazon becoming so big? I mean, at this point, that everything's going to be owned by Amazon. It depends yeah. on if Even Amazon decides to actually put anything into their retail stores instead of just having them be well, they're, they're... bought out brick advertisements. Yeah, yeah sh- they're planning on... A... They bought Whole Foods, and so mm-hmm. you can buy Amazon Echoes and stuff at Whole Foods now. Yeah. So, That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're going to spend $1,000 there anyway, so might as well. Yeah, <laughs> whole, whole well paycheck. Some, whole yeah, paycheck. Electronics with it, yeah. Literally your entire paycheck. Um, okay, so real quick before we move on. So highways and stuff like that, because I say 75, 635. Um, like I, what is 635's actual name? I think I don't know if there is one. Is, 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 is uh, There's got to be a name for it. It's like Belt. No, not Beltline. Um, well, it's like 35 doesn't have a name. It's just I-35. Well, that's because it's interstate highway i don't 35. think that matters yeah but do you like say central or like sam rayburn like i say 75 121 okay yeah the only the only so one you just i really do numbers yeah the only one i really make that exception for is sam rayburn because there are like there are actually stretches of road where it doesn't encompass 121 like uh-huh. they're not the same thing yeah. through the entire expanse of the road oh mr technical over here i do my best that's, that's, to be accurate that's good um have you guys ever been to oklahoma Mm, I'm just because you mentioned 35. Never really, uh, when I was a young wee baby, <laughs> really? never done much adventuring there. For what? Family. You have family in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Are they still alive or are they dead? Uh, half and half, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't that's really, good. I don't really fuck with them. That's good. Oh, well, that's not, not good. Not the part of the family I like. Wait, no. you don't fuck your family? No. no okay, never. that's good. Yeah, that's that, very that good. is good. Yeah, <laughs> no, that is a good thing. Incest <laughs> is bad, kids. There's a uh, there's a really awesome zoo. Um, it's. They have, like, uh, endangered species and stuff like that. So, yeah. you've got, like, uh, tigers and other shit like that. And there's this really, really flamboyant cowboy there. And he actually was, I think he was on the ticket for the 2016 presidential election. Why? Because he wanted to make a change. And he had, like, a campaign you you slogan. Don't, you and don't a make a thing. change from being a cowboy at a fucking zoo. Yo, he was, he was really... I mean, you say that, but look at our current president. Yeah. Yeah, but at least he has money. <laughs> No, he doesn't. He has a lot more than a cowboy to zoo does. You want a bit? Yes. I'll call him up right now. I have it. I was about to be like, no, you don't. What the fuck? I have both of their phone numbers in my phone. Oh, yeah. I would be unbelievably impressed. Bing, bing. (laughs) Bonster. I love those videos. Great videos. Uh, All right. um, You people know a lot about drugs. What? What? What was that from? It's more Donald Trump stuff. Is it really? Yep. Yeah, oh, it's, it sure is. I yeah. just know the beep, bing, bing, bong, bong, bong. <laughs> bing, 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 bong. 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 <laughs> bing, 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 bong. Has, has Obama been memed that much, or has Trump been the um, top the only meme? Trump kind of brought it on himself. Yeah, so. Trump <laughs> Trump is like the living meme president, but I know that Obama, I mean, the only real meme you got from Obama is thanks, Obama. This and true. that died because he actually because there's, he there's, actually a, there's said, a subreddit that is r slash thanks Obama, yeah. and Obama posted on there saying, you're welcome. Really? So yeah, it's dead. <laughs> like it's not even it's not even a meme anymore he, because he you can't you can't beat it. Yeah. it. You can't yeah. beat it now. That's like it's true. done. <laughs> wow. Dang. Obama killed it, man. Um as he, a president and as a meme lord. That is true. He was I don't know. I thought he was like the chillest president that He's pretty great. Yeah. He just seems in it. He's he's cool. He's hip hopping in. Yeah, dude. Did you see his uh he did like an exit video or something like that or like whenever he was leaving, it was him and Joe Biden and he's like Man, what am I gonna do now? I'm so used to being president and killing it both terms or something like that. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. I, and, yeah, I think I did see that actually. I don't yeah. remember it very clearly. But. Yeah, he was he was just so like he was hyper aware and because like with Trump, it's like he's not a traditional president. And I don't think Obama was a traditional president president, but like he still he still had that part to play. But yeah. with Trump, he's just he never plays the part at all. He's just he's, he's just, a non traditional. He's such a big mouth. He's a big mouth. I would. Does he have a big mouth at like physically? I don't know. Who I know might? he has small hands. That's that's a he's stereotype. Got a serious, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. He's got a serious like pout that he's got going on a lot of the time. Like he's got jowls. Yeah, but, he's got like resting bitch face or he something. Looks like a dog. Exactly. But um, he said he looks like a dog. I don't know. Yeah. The big thing. The big thing he's that gets like... me about just Trump as president of the United States is we know we have known that when he got into office that he's fabulously wealthy so i just want to know why he can't hire a good press secretary that's so true like yeah. okay like seriously i i haven't done any research on like the previous press secretaries that we've had but i i've i don't know i'm i think she's gone within the month she's she's going to be replaced again for some either scandal or uh one of the reporters cause my theory is one of the reporters is going to say something to strike her uh uh, strike her anger bone and she's gonna bitch just and complain go off on him yeah and then um hey who's calling you evan 
My older brother. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, did you tell him that you're doing something super important right now? Yeah, I did. Don't worry. Oh, you did? I hit him with the I'll call you back later message. Wow. Yeah. Well, how long is later? Um, About probably like two or three hours. Really? Yeah. About however much later the, we're doing this? The later for me is like 10 minutes. That's So he's going to expect not... a call in 10 minutes? He's not you. How do you know? I'm certain. <laughs> I am, having, I'm certain. I have this. to tell you something, Evan. Having dude, that my having brother is guy, buff I as fuck. I am pretty convinced that he is not you. Yeah, but, dude, he is buff as fuck. Oh, really? Yeah, he looks completely different than me. Wow, that's hurtful. Dude has like literally his biceps are as big as your head. Really? I'm not. Joking. That's unattractive. I don't like that. I, I, I honest, think it might be exaggerating a little bit. But. Not well, that no, much. but like there are people out there that like they rip themselves. Like it almost looks like they're they gotten like a bike pump or something and just and stuck just it in stuck their it in muscles their and, yep. <laughs> and then they're just so like honestly how is that attractive like i understand being slim and having like a six pack or something like that but when you get past a point where you start like self tanning and like like essentially anything any of those muscle man universe uh mm-hmm. competitions or whatever oh my gosh that's <laughs> right <laughs> that's he's got he's oh damn strong <laughs> yeah he looks strong See, yeah. that's not as bad because it's... He, he's not, like, full-on, like, inflating about to explode. He's yeah, just like, big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's a big guy. Yeah, All and right. he's uh, he's an EMT, so it works out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, saving lives. Wanted to do, like, firefighting or just... Yeah, like, he wants to eventually be a firefighter. Oh, okay. So he got a certification and then... Yeah, he has his EMT cert. He's working on firefighter right now. Oh, wow. That's mm-hmm. really awesome. I yeah. know someone who was going to be a firefighter, but then he was just like, no, nah, I'm all right. Nice. I mean... I can I understand that. So it's running into burning buildings is not everyone's forte. Well, I mean, I don't think it was that for him. I think it was mostly just he was he sat down. And he's like, OK, I'm about to kind of pass that threshold of this is where I'm going to go for the next you know, five to ten years of my life. And yeah. He's just yeah. like, hey, I'm good. Cause, I understand uh, that. Yeah. I, I, if you guys ever imagine doing like uh, cops, firefighters, ambulance, whatever, like public servants to the um, city. I've considered being a police officer. Really? Yeah, just for because police officers are badass. Or... No, I just I I think it's something I'd be decent at for a line of work. I mean, okay. Yeah. All right. What about you? I don't. Nothing in that like traditional spot spotlight role of like police officer, firefighter, or like uh, EMT or anything like that. Sure. Maybe he, it, this dude wants to be a pilot. I mean, this dude does want to be a pilot. Wait, but... really? Like a uh, not commercial or like pew 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 <laughs> die <laughs> die no. bastard pew 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 no, pew pew pew. I did consider going into the air force at one point but i actually don't fit in most of their planes I'm slightly too tall but uh, yeah you are okay like not not to be offensive or anything whenever you walk through my door i was just like wait what <laughs> <laughs> i remember i Who remember is being eye level with you at one point in life <laughs> and yeah. now you um, are a ginormal man i mean scrawny is all heck but um Still no ginormal man north like I just, I just really am fascinated with flight in general. My plan is actually to be an aerospace engineer, but right. I was hoping to get a private pilot's license at some point in my life when I'm a little more successful than I am now. Oh. Well, so like you'd want to, you'd be one of those guys that once you make the money, you're gonna have like your own private plane and have your private airstrip or whatever, and like yeah, instead of around. building model cars, he's gonna have a real fucking plane. That'd that's, be awesome. That's the plan. I, I don't know how well it'll actually pan out, but that is dude, it'll pan. That out. is the goal. Just believe. Just pan, it'll, it'll pan that's out. That's the American dream, as far well, as I'm concerned. The American I mean, dream is dead. I, I woke up yesterday. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's I also ig- woke up today. That's a pretty ignorant, bro. How's that ignorant? I don't know, dude. Being a pilot would be awesome. Like, being honestly, a pilot would be awesome. If, if I could just, I know we kind of had this conversation before about doing whatever for money. Ah, but, yes. But um, I don't know. I just, I feel like if you're like, a, just like even just for a commercial pilot for like Southwest or something, mm-hmm. you're just flying all the time and you got to visit cities and stuff. And yeah. whenever you have like your break, you're like, hey, I'm chilling in Hawaii, or and then I'm chilling in Seattle, and I'm chilling in San Francisco, and then I'm chilling in blah blah blah. Yeah, and it would just be, it'd be really awesome, just because. I love the idea of travel. Speaking of uh, being a pilot, did yeah. you know that being an air traffic controller is the most stressful job in the United States? Yeah, because if you because if you fuck up, people die. Yeah, a lot of people, not just one person. But like, but Planes. like, in the how much how much of a margin of error do you have? Do you think is it just like oh, it needs to precisely need to income play needs to dock it, at this position well, here? The trouble then... is, it really it's not it's not consistent is another problem with this. Cause like some days it's low traffic, weather's clear and uh-huh. you don't like, you can kind of sit back a bit, but sure. then 
a lot of the time you will have like especially in an airstrip like in new york or something like that oh that's true i bet like have, the jfk airport oh, yeah, is like, it's just like the air traffic around major cities is really hefty and if, well i mean and if any pilot's communication equipment goes down you've suddenly got an awful lot to sift through i mean if you have uh because I, I feel like uh at least the dfw airport it's it's humongo so like and it's not necessary it's kind of I feel like it's relatively isolated. You're not going to have... Because like, mm-hmm. I, I know, at least in New York, a lot of their airports are just fucking right there. And yeah. five minutes, you're in some neighborhood or something like that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, at least with the DFW airport, you've got big... It is fairly isolated. Yeah. You've so got a lot of space. Probably less stressful. I wouldn't want to be uh, during like a storm or something like that. Because then you have to think about the families who are bitching and complaining to the stewardesses saying, yeah. I have to be somewhere because I'm important. And then, yeah. and then you're like, well you're gonna die if you get on that airplane so we're not gonna let you get on that airplane so how about i have a decent topic idea yeah sure Um, go ahead take it away mr host thanks man you're welcome anytime (laughs) um so where all of you worked you've all um so we're gonna give a brief synopsis of evolve's work history um chapter one uh as soon as i turned 16 i was like i want to work at gamestop and then um, literally on my birthday when I turned 16, submitted my application to GameStop, got a call for an interview like the following week or something. And then I think sometime in October they hired me or something like that and then worked there for the season. And then they were going to bring me on as like a real employee or whatever. But then they were like, nah. And um, fun fact, we're going to tangent off of my tangent. Um there was a chick who was working there who I knew from uh, Madness Games. She used, okay. to, she used to work at Madness Games, and it was before they did any expansion. Like, yeah, it was before just like they moved over hole to the... in the uh, wall, like, yeah. literally just, that was the it. The good and, Madness. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm... <laughs> the new one's good. I, I like I, the new one. The old one just... It was more homey, and like, yeah, it was, it was close. And, yeah. Um, but anyway, so she worked there, and I actually was kind of crushing on her at the time, because, I mean, she was just this really gorgeous, yeah. smart, cute girl. She worked at GameStop. She, no, she worked at Madness. And, uh, then, and then she moved. Okay, then she that. moved over to GameStop, and I freaking hated her because <laughs> she literally had no idea, had no, had no idea what video games were, or anytime someone's like, "Oh, let me recommend a game for me for my seven year old child for the Wii or something," she'd be like, Grand "Oh, let's." <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. She might as well, but uh, yeah, she was horrible, and I hated her. She was bad at her job and was stupid. Um, and That's then, nice. and then, uh, <laughs> left that at, or, you know, they said, thank you for working for the holiday, whatever. And I was like, okay, fine. Yep. And then paycheck. See ya. That, this is true. I think maybe had, I forget how many paychecks I got, but, um, I guess I could think about it, but I'm not going to. So, um, after that, I didn't work until my junior year of high school, senior year of high school. Just kidding. Worked at Chick Fil A for a year, mm-hmm. and then went to UNT, and then worked, worked at Chick Fil A there, UNT. Yeah. and then um, brought home the Nuggets, boy. Uh, dude, that was so. That was like the honestly, the pay was literally below shit. But like the fact that, <laughs> but the fact that I could bring home like three to four chick-fil-a sandwiches you know six box of nuggets and just like my heart's content i remember one night you showed up at our door oh yeah and you were like hey guys i brought dinner and you (laughs) brought in a drawstring bag oh yeah fucking filled (laughs) to the brim with nuggets oh yeah you had like six chick-fil-a sandwiches you had like four or five boxes of nuggets because and you were like i also brought a bunch of sauce and we were all just like dude what yeah (laughs) uh because fun fact um a lot of that chick-fil-a food went to, to Kerr. Kerr yeah, yeah for the next day or whatever. i noticed because the, yeah. the nuggets they would serve or pretty much the same, were yeah. day were they were like, like two one to two they were like old. one day old re-ovened chick-fil-a nuggets and they were a little bit crunchier and they were actually like pretty wow. good that's pretty gross dude i don't care bro dude, I, I honestly <laughs> they don't do uh uh breakfast for dinner anymore at Kerr. Really? You remember how they used to open it at like 11 for like pancakes, eggs, sausage, yes. bacon, and all the yes. cereal? Yeah. They don't do that anymore. Well, that's good. No, it's not. Yo, honestly, maple was the bomb. Like Maple was pretty good. I really enjoyed the uh, the fried PB&J. I think yeah, that's true. That's, uh, that's pretty probably, good. That's probably one thing I really miss is like the cafeterias and stuff like that. Just yeah. like the dorm life. was. Okay, okay. Dope. So we were jobs. Sorry, so you worked tangent, it. off tangent. Yeah. So I worked there and then off I left. Tangenting. And then I worked at Jason's Deli because I started uh, telecommuting or uh, telecommuting, just regular commuting to save money. Mm-hmm. And so went to Jason's Deli and then I was a delivery driver there for a little bit. And then uh, and then I think that was when I got my uh, the job before this one. And it was just like 
bank data reconciliation for a company. Okay. Okay. And I was there for like eight months and then they weren't going to move me anywhere. And I was asking for more responsibility and they were like, no. And I was like, well, if you're not going to appreciate my talents, then I'm going to go see somewhere you later, yeah. sucker. And then I left and then I got the job that I am currently now I'm doing that full time. Okay. So that's okay. all the words jobs you worked, Evan? Yeah. Well, uh, it's a much shorter list than the illustrious career of our friend Yuval. Um, first job was between my junior and senior year of high school. Um, worked in the parts department at a Ford dealership, which was really... That sounds really awesome. You know, it was pretty rad, but uh, warehouses are not the most comfortable places to work in the summer in Texas. Uh, <laughs> they, because Especially because this one in particular was not air conditioned okay um so it was it was just hot as hell all the so time so would you but... actually like work on vehicles and stuff like that or no i wasn't i wasn't a mechanic or anything like that it was oh. more so um i was just working in the parts warehouse itself getting oh, okay. getting parts ready for shipping gotcha. them in, sorting okay, them out, okay. that kind of thing so like uh logistics and stuff like that pretty okay. much yeah all right and then where then after that uh evan got off snapchat <laughs> after that i was uh at university for a nice long while sure. and then uh that petered out a bit went to target been working there for a while and that is the extent of my work history well then then you're gonna work with yeah the Evans now i'm gonna be starting off at the uh you have no center. loyalty yeah. it's not that i have mo- no loyalty it's that i need more money that's people. true no, you're right. <laughs> money, money money trumps everything i well, honestly, i'd like to say m- money obama everything huh because huh um, um, so I figured where, where we could go with the uh, the work thing. No, was... you have to tell your work history. No, now. yeah, I'm about to. I, oh, yeah. I know, okay. Well, where are you preface. trying to bridge this conversation to? I was just gonna preface it so we can all tell bad work stories. Okay. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, you both worked in retail. I've worked in a call center for I almost two retail. years. We've got to have some good stories between us. Is my point. I have no good stories. You are lying. <sighs> I do not believe. Hurry you. up and tell me where you um, worked. So I Jack worked. Wagon. My first job was at Henry's Ice Cream in Plano. I remember that. Uh, after I that, you there because I don't think we were friends at that time. Go ahead. We've always been friends, dude. No, we since you I were born. I hated your guts up until <laughs> about oh, today. Okay, yeah, okay, gotcha. You texted me. I was like, oh, I guess I probably should not hate this guy on the podcast. All right, you're right. Continue. You're right. <laughs> um, worked at Henry's Ice Cream, little um, family family owned ice cream shop in Plano. Wait, it was Henry's Ice Cream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was in Plano. Yeah. It was a family shop. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It, actually, it was this place called Henry's Ice Cream in Plano, and really? it's like a family owned ice cream shop. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's right. crazy. Okay. That makes sense. Um. After that, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Just kidding, sorry. The, let's not keep looping. <laughs> After that, I worked at a little tea shop in Plano called Tea to Go. The place was all right. I worked there for about two weeks, and then I didn't work there anymore. And then oh, I worked at Mean Green Central Grill a- in a wonderful that, little yeah. city of Denton, Texas. I remember that. I have some stupid ass stories from where that. the roads so are absolutely I. terrible. That is true. You know, honestly, <laughs> I really hate Denton roads. Like they are terrible. I'd rather drive in Dallas blindfolded than. I well, roads. wow, no, not not quite that I, bad. I, no, I hate Denton roads because real quick i'm, I'm gonna interrupt sure. you as i always do um there have been times where i've been driving on uh 35 uh leave so leaving work like this is and this is probably within the last three to four months so okay. leaving work in lewisville going north on 35 and seriously wait you work in lewisville yeah i do a, dude I, we basically live in lewisville actually we literally live in lewisville mckinney didn't we have this conversation before? We don't live on 75. Are you sure? Very yes. sure. Well, he said 20 minutes up 75. No, no he said 20, said 20 minutes up minutes the highway. Yes, which is not the same thing. But the highway doesn't go up. 75 goes up. <laughs> it doesn't go up either. North, it goes north, north. North and up north are not the North is up. Thing. <laughs> no. All right. Space anyway, up, go on. <laughs> um, so 35 was really horrible. And like I've legitimately almost uh, had my car uh, like drive off the road because... Um, they were doing some bullshit road repair and yeah. it was like it wasn't totally paved over correctly and so i'd be driving and my car would be shaking like it'd be like and it's just it gave me such anxiety that like and there'd be no one around me but i'd just be shaking this whole time and yeah. again i'd rather drive in dallas blindfolded than experience that again 
I'd That's... rather just die, honestly. I hate well, the I hate unfortunately, so I think much. driving blindfolded in Dallas would be a very similar experience. Nah. But... Okay. <laughs> I mean, no, because you'd hit someone and die so quick, you wouldn't even know. Exactly. Yeah, it, on 35, it would just be like you're blindfolded the whole time. On That's 35, true. you got, like, the torture element to it. That's true. But, um, so work that Mean Green Central Grill. Yeah. Denton Road suck. Mason continuing. Too, right? Yeah, Mason. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mason, okay, did, just, Mason did work there for a little bit, yeah. Mason was, like, going hard at that job. Anyways, um, Yeah, he really was. He really work. was. All right. Um, and then I worked at a place called JC Commercial in Louisville, which I did phone calls for a construction company. Yeah. Um, that place fucking sucked, too. Yeah. And now I work at Carrington International, which yeah. is a nice little call center. Yeah. In which I take calls regarding dental insurance. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all the places I've worked. So who's going to start with the bad uh, bad work stories? Um, well, okay. Real quick, before we, before we do this, yeah. I feel like this is a reoccurring theme, is that we're just having millennial bitch fest. Um, it's as, an easy thing to make podcasts about. I mean, you're right. And <laughs> it's as, as so lovingly as my dad puts it, um, we're just bitching and complaining. We're not actually having relative conversation to what the personal effects on our life are and how we're coping with it slash moving forward in our futures. We're just sitting and bitching, complaining, which I love to do that. (laughs) uh, The last podcast we just did, um, I was just, I was going hard and bitch complain. Um, We were, I I was bitching and complaining about sales and I was bitching (laughs) and complaining about, because I was working at Target Mobile and Mm -hmm. I was bitching about that and that experience and then we bitched about books, and we bitched about uh, shit. I don't know, but I just remember there was a lot of bitching. Bitching that about sounds books. like it. About bitching, bitching about, about bitching books. What did that actually entail? I'm just um, curious. It, Give me a summary. The, the five second summary was there was this guy and uh, at UNT campus. You know how like the preacher dude is on Wednesdays, oh, yeah. Or whatever? yeah. So like there was a monk or something that showed up and he was giving me this book about And he tried to sell it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I got and I forget where it is, but I got an actual free book. It was still Mm -hmm. like I think maybe like fifty pages or something like that. And I was just bitching about that and then um I was bitching about how I have and I've I've probably within the past forty eight hours I've told this story more than I have in the past like seven years. But (laughs) uh, we're gonna tell the story again. Because, you know, fuck it, why not? Because it's your favorite story. Um and high well, it's not my favorite it's just it's it's like I'm, I'm totally okay. Like, some, okay, here's something relevant. Um, I'm very much okay with pointing out my flaws, and you know, I think at a younger age, um, it was a lot more embarrassing for me if someone's like, "Ha ha, you did a thing that was stupid," and then I felt like a piece of shit. But I think now, uh, especially with everything that I've been through in life, um, if someone's gonna point out a flaw or make fun of me or whatever it is, um, as long as if as long as I know it's within kind of a good, healthy, good conscious, hey, you're my buddy, we're just jerk, yeah. jerking each other. Um, you yeah, know, fuck you. Yeah, like, thank you. I love you, Evan. Um, <laughs> you know, because in, in this type of environment, I'm totally fine with it. Whereas, yeah. you know, probably, you know, five, six, seven years ago, I would have gotten hurt and I would have taken it personally. And it was so I feel like I've developed and evolved from there. So I'll always tell these stories about me acting like a complete idiot or a complete buffoon because yeah. fuck it. Why not? Um, Evan, you really need to get off of Snapchat, dude. You are addicted. I'm not. Yeah, you are. Go on with your story. No, I'm going to... We need to talk about your addiction here. I don't have an addiction to anything, you all, besides cigarettes. <laughs> besides now go on with your story. <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right, fine. So, uh, in high school, uh, we had, you know, obviously the mandatory reading and stuff like that. And so, my sophomore year, um, we, I think, I probably did the most assigned reading in sophomore year. Um, and so, there was once we finished up a book or something like that and then we were moving on to the next book and in my head i heard macbeth i heard okay. we need and i have the no fear shakespeare macbeth right on that bookshelf and i was like okay we're gonna do this it'd be awesome because i did shakespeare we did romeo and juliet in freshman year and i knew we we're gonna do some more uh, shakespeare so i figured okay it makes sense we're just kind of different genre it's macbeth time sure yeah it's macbeth time that wasn't the book. No. No. The book we had to get was A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Uh, Dickens. Yep. And, it's a good book. And so it was like the day. It's a good last third of a book. It was. <laughs> I, I liked it overall. But yeah. fun fact, um, Charles Dickens, and I didn't tell this on the last podcast. So fun fact, uh, went because he was releasing, he released that book in short installments. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, every week would be a new section. Um, he got paid for every word in that section installment. So wow. he's literally, if you take some segments of the book, you can, he, you can condense what he says in like a paragraph to maybe a, <sighs> a sentence, sentence or two. two. Yeah, that's exactly. Crazy. 
So, and I actually made a really stupid, because this was back in the day when I thought, like, Facebook posts should be witty and yeah. off, uh-huh. off, yeah. off jaunter, jaunter and, you know, bullshit like that. Yeah. And so, um, I made some post about it, and I got, like, eight likes, and I was just like, yeah, I'm so good, I'm so smart, people think I'm... And then I just realized Facebook is just about bragging and showing yeah. off your life to everyone. Yep. Which, honestly... Um, a lot of people are saying social media is bad and Facebook's horrible and it you know causes depression and blah 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 and you see things out of scope. But I think it's the exact opposite. Where if you realize that these are just segments of people's lives and mm-hmm. these are only literally just snapshots of someone's life, they're only going to yeah. give you the highlights. And so yeah. exactly instead of being and for the longest time I was always jealous and like blah blah blah. blah. But uh, if you take it with a grain of salt and you say oh well, good for them they're happy whatever so. Yeah, and it's kind of one of those things where if you if you follow like one single person on Facebook, yeah, you're only gonna see a good Snapchat, it's not snapshot. See, every, you're addicted. You're get out of here. Snapchat, <laughs> get out of here. Story. You're only gonna see a good snapshot every once in a while. Sure, but it's because you have a hundred, two hundred people, half of them you don't even know added. Right. You're constantly seeing snapshots from everyone's life, and they want it to look good. Yeah, and it just yep. all piles so up. There, right there, I think that's what part of the depression issue is. Is Pete is. Not only do you see the best snapshots of everybody's lives, you uh-huh. see the best snapshots of everybody's lives sure. all at once. Sure, and sure, it's sure. kind of overwhelming. Sure. I think. I, to a certain extent, um, there was definitely a point in time where I had probably like 300, 400 friends. Humble yeah. brag. Um, but then I realized <laughs> that, damn, you know, I'm about to graduate college and I literally don't talk to a good chunk of these. 75% so, of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I removed, I think I still have both of you guys because. Um, I mean, Evan, we've known each other for a very years. long time um, and longer than E squared has been a thing. <laughs> this is actually true. Yeah, it's very true. Um, there's actually I was uh, I was talking to my mom. Um, I had lunch with her today. And so um, I mentioned that you're going to be on the podcast and she's like, oh, yeah, I remember blah, 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 blah. Evan was like this little cute child, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and uh, and so uh, w- when we we're talking about it, I have this really uh, vivid, vivid memory of i got a really like a crazy bloody nose during gym and i don't know i picked my nose or something or like i got hit in the face <laughs> with the ball i honestly can't remember um it was probably the picking the nose i was one. gonna so, say definitely you picked your nose I, oh i was <laughs> very anyways possible. um gotta get that gold so i went to the nurse's office and uh for there and your mom was just super chill and i just sat i think i was there for like half an hour and it was just the most yeah awesome experience and i was just like do i have to go back to class i don't want to go to class i just want to stay here so um man it was it was really awesome i forget why i was tangenting off into elementary school but um that's all right we went oh friend length from, friend facebook friends yeah. yeah so and then back to books and back to jobs i think is where we we're are. not going back to jobs i don't it's, talk about that. Kind of, yeah. i want to talk about depression because apparently it's a thing it's definitely a thing. thing Depression is definitely a thing, yeah. So here we go. Here's a controversial uh, idea on depression. I think it's all bullshit. I think... Are you you serious, though? I I am serious. Okay, I'm going to punch you in the fucking face. Let me me (laughs) explain. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't touch me. Go ahead. Stop touching me. Why can't I touch you? Please. You let Evan touch you. That's different. Uh, What? (laughs) (laughs) You you let Evan yourself touch you and normal Evan touch you. Or how I say it. Am I not normal Evan? No, you're the bad Evan. It's like the good Rick, bad Rick, uh, whenever they got detoxed. And did you see that episode? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. That so is a you're great de- episode. You're the detoxed Rick. And then this is the, well, I guess the detoxed Evan. Anyways, um, <laughs> back to my explanation. I say something completely outlandish and don't back it up. Um, you know what? No, we're just going to end the podcast. All right. There you go, guys. Let's see another, no, that was a, it's a fun night. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, One More Podcast podcast. I am your not host, Evan. Um, no, okay. So back to our actual host, you all. Hey, this thank is you. gonna need some real cutting afterwards, but I'm sure. Oh you're no, up to we're the task. we're all just gonna. This is all live. Doesn't cut. Yeah, I don't cut. Okay. So it's all good. I mean, yeah. It's. I just. I I find it fun. I know it's a little vain to say that like I listen to my own podcast, but no. it's just. It's I cool mean, you have to listen to them, man. That's partially true, yeah. but um, just because it's like the jokes and stuff that we tell and the laughs, and then I'll just be at my desk laughing, and I've got my headphones in, and you just everyone it's quiet or something and you just hear <laughs> and, and then you just yeah. get that you ball out just <laughs> <laughs> um anyways back to the depression that was, that which is the one that i want to okay so you think depression is bullshit go on um so i think in isolated incidents you can feel depressed um mm-hmm. but i think uh the generalization of especially youth nowadays um where you can be quote-unquote clinically depressed um i just i i I view that as a more extreme um, uh, 
analysis of someone's personality and someone's uh, um, space in life where I think, because for me, you know, I'd, I'd have uh, definitely, uh, I would have ups and downs. And so there'd be probably a week where I feel good and I feel happy with myself. And then maybe a few days where I'm just like, I don't do anything. I just lay in bed all day. You know, it's just, it's just, yeah. you, you kind of hit a wall. And so um, I wouldn't say that I have depression. It's just within my environment, there are certain aspects of life which I'd be depressed about. And so yeah. um, I think that's, I should probably rephrase it. And I think that's the distinction that I want to make is that um, sure that there are a lot of kids that can be depressed and, and have certain life events or certain actions or choices that they do in life lead them down a road that can make them depressed. But I think that's only temporary. I think true actual depression. Um, I think that's in more severe cases. So um, I, I, you know, I, I think I think it would be you're you, you more have anxiety and you're depressed. And yeah. then I think that can be easily mistaken for, oh, you have depression. You have the conditional state of depression for your extended life. And so because I, I know I, I keep shaking the table, but I know people who um, have definitely gone through the shitter and back. Yeah. And, you know, they've had, you know, fucked up life experiences. Mm-hmm. And you um, and so it's and so it's difficult for me when you have like a you know, a high schooler. And even when I was in high school, you know, have other high school saying, Oh, I have depression. It's like, no, you are a middle-class, uh, uh, nuclear family making B's and A's. And it's like, you're just, you're depressed. You're something you're, you're down. You got the Debbie downers or something like that. Yeah. It's like, like you are, you depressed. Yeah. Right. You you are depressed at this time, but you are, you do not have depression. Exactly. Like how you can love somebody, but you are not in In love love. with that person. Yeah, right. Exactly. So I think, and I think in my opinion, it's a definite, uh, it gets mixed and, and I mean, it's not like I'm going to get angry and agitated. How dare you? You are you. You swine. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you were saying it wrong. Like, whatever. You're I not like. going to be like an asshole about it. That's sure. just your opinion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I just what do you guys think? Are you I, just kind of the same boat? I do largely agree. I just it's just kind of funny to me that um, English is a language with so many wonderful little words. And yet we end up using the same one for a number of different things and it just leads to a lot of confusion that's like, very true like for example i think you used depression or depressed in like two or three different ways in your little oh uh, okay spiel good over awesome. there so and which is fine and right. it made perfect sense in context right but it's it's just sometimes a little difficult to tell sure what people are actually getting at in the in the end and regarding depression and mental illness in general i think that it's we're just at a very odd point as far as as far as actually diagnosing it or being aware of it Uh whereas this is like part of the reason that as you said earlier millennials complain about so many things is that there are so many brand new things to complain about we've got we've got laws for gay marriage very recently passed we've got um donald trump donald (laughs) Donald trump in office (laughs) Um, possible war I, I don't think that's particularly likely. Ooh, but, ooh let me yeah. convince you otherwise. But go ahead, continue. Oh uh, well, no, I there are a lot of global issues right now. I just don't really see it escalating mm-hmm. too terribly much more without something going horribly wrong. Without elsewhere. someone finally pressing the big red button. Yeah. <clears throat> well, no, I, I want you to continue on the depression, but I'll, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll, we'll come back. We'll circle the big red button. Sure thing. Okay. Um, and then we'll talk about job stories. Just <laughs> relating relating to mental illness, I feel like. It, I feel like depression gets misdiagnosed a lot. Mm-hmm. I feel like depression goes undiagnosed a lot. Okay. It's just it's just something that it's very difficult to nail down a clear definition of this is what depression is. It is affecting this many people. Sure. Yeah. Um, because uh, someone who is depressed may not re- understand or realize that they are depressed is another thing is because not only while you have multiple different definitions or different ways of looking at what depression technically is. Uh huh. If you, I mean, you could, you could go to someone on the street, you can, you could go to a hundred people on the street and ask them if they're depressed or not. And I can guarantee you, you'd have some people who say yes, that aren't. And some people that say no, who are, but just That's don't true. realize it That's because true. unfortunately, you know, we can't get into each other's heads and understand what they see and how they, how they perceive everything. I guess. Right. Well, fortunately, depending on your perspective, unfortunately, or fortunately, unfortunately for the sake of understanding, fortunately for the sake of. <laughs> I mean, I think it's also, it's definitely, 
uh, I think pride kind of gets in the way for a lot of people yeah. where hello they, that's me I am pride <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't want to admit uh, their mistakes or admit that they're uh, they're flawed I know someone and, like that is that are we referring to Evan maybe I'm referring oh, to myself oh, I, don't okay. know if anyone else is. I may or not be may or may not be referring to the man who just referred to himself oh, okay. <laughs> um, so real quick I wanted to ask you guys, and I can cut this out if uh, you don't want to talk about it or, you know, just so we never mention this, um, in terms of <clears throat> being on medication at all um, and no. points in our lives. You don't, want, you don't want to talk about it or you've never... Oh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll talk okay. about it. Sure. I was just saying, I was just coming in with a preemptive. I've never been on depression oh, okay. medication. Sure. Oh, well, um, I mean... Just medication in general? Well, I mean, obviously, like, if you... Not like... I think the topic led into depression, but any sure. general medication... Any, 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 like when Evan brought up mental illness, I, um, for the, the immediate thing that, uh, came to my mind was, um, when I was younger, I was diagnosed ADHD, ADHD right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I was a hyperactive child. I still am hyperactive, but, yeah. um, and I don't really remember this, but my mom like swears up and down that, you know, I've had it when I was on the medication, complete and total personality change. Like I'd yeah. be slumping around, not doing anything, you know? Um, and so I was curious to know if. One, have you guys not necessarily? We don't have to focus on ADHD or depression uh-huh. or whatever it is, but in terms of if your if your head done fucked up, do you get any medication for it? Well, and then um, what are your opinions on it? How effective it is? Personally, it, is it um, how effective I, is it? I do believe that I am an undiagnosed ADHD. Okay. Because even now and all the way through school, I've always had focus issues. Mm-hmm. I like I'm I'm that person that at work whenever like whenever a door closes. Mm-hmm. I instantly look at it. I'm sure I hear a noise and it instantly grabs my attention and I lose focus on what I was doing. Okay. I can usually at this point in my life, I can grab that focus back relatively easily. Okay. But was that a lot of you building you, you training yourself or did you have any external help? I, or? I, for whether, whether or not I am ADHD, I've sure. never been, um, prescribed anything for that. I've never been prescribed anything for my depression because I mean, this is just a personal opinion. I don't want anybody to get offended by this, whether it's either of you or anybody no, who's okay. listening. This is an offensive but free zone. While I am not a prideful person in general, I don't show a lot of external pride. Uh-huh. I have too much internal pride to take medication. I okay. think so that, you think you can beat it yourself? Yeah. Or you can you can handle it and you Absolutely. have it under control. Okay. Absolutely. Sure. Although I can you know, see the upsides of like, for, for example, depression, right? I can see the upsides of, you know, having a medication that helps you release your dopamine a little bit easier and get mm-hmm. into a happy mood. That's totally understandable. If any, and, and, and if anybody uses that to help them, I, that's great. That's sure. awesome. I'm glad you have something that helps you. Sure. But just when it's, I think it's really just a personal bias against it for me Okay. that I don't want, I don't take out on anybody, but it's like, sure. Just me personally. As much as I know medication can help, I would rather deal with it myself. So and even if it is harder that way, uh-huh. I would rather put myself through that and be able to deal with it myself so that I can be truly independent on my brain. So do you think um, and so what I was trying to get at in terms of you tackling yourself, um, you know, 10 years ago, Mr. Evan versus now, Mr. Evan, do you think you've built the skills to because you said now you're able to get your attention back yeah. a little faster and you're able to focus more um, and so that you, you, you'd attribute that all to yourself. I mean, at I this, mean, be at, selfish, like, be yeah, proud I mean, at, at this point, yes, I, I would attribute being able to kind of, I guess, wrangle my demons. Mm-hmm. I, I would attribute that to myself. And okay. when it comes to, I guess, I guess the ADHD thing. Sure. At this point, I still can lose focus very easily. Like whenever, you know, like I'm basically like, like the dog from up, like squirrel. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I hear something, I see something, it grabs my attention. I deal with that. And then once I've, once I've looked at it and, you know, had my fill. Your curiosity. Yeah, once I've satisfied my curiosity, exactly. Sure. I can move back to what I'm doing and focus on it. Okay. Um, as far as depression is concerned, I don't think I was ever really depressed until my mom passed away. Okay. And then from there, that was uh, fifth grade. Right. So all through middle school, I was kind of fucky. Right. That's a good, good way. I was fucky. Excellent descriptor. And then... I was still kind of fucky in high school, senior high, and a little fucky in college, but I mainly came to terms with it and realized mm. that that's part of life. Sure. And tried not to let it get to me. Of course. And so then, just this year, I think it has been a bit more of a struggle because my dad passed away as well. Mm. So, being, you know, 21 with no parents, and while I do agree with what you were talking about on depression, mm. on it being, I, I guess for both of you, it being kind of 
almost a flavor of the month mental illness as bad as yeah. that sounds. No, no, I, it, it makes like, sense. Yeah, no, as bad real. as it sounds, very real thing, everybody yeah. and their mother and their mother's dog and their mother's dog's mother, it, something goes wrong in their life, mm-hmm. whether it's big or small, and then they go, oh, I'm depressed. Right. And It's kind of the, the, the scapegoat, the easy, easy yeah, point to. Yeah. It's easy just to say, I'm depressed, and people will be like, oh, I'm sorry. Sure. But, and I'm, I am tangenting a little bit at this point. No, you're point. good. Go for it. Um, but it's like, you know, I, I've even met people or like I've even met people who straight up have a great nuclear family. Mm-hmm. Their college is completely fa- paid for by their parents. They have a nice car. They don't have anything to worry about. You know, mm-hmm. they have they've never dealt with loss. They've never dealt with really anything bad. Sure. But they still claim they are depressed. Right. And I think that's where clinical depression can come into it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are people in this situation who truly can be depressed. Right. It's just something but, that's fucked up in their head. And... Yeah. At, at that point, it's just, it is literally their brain. Right. And then I think on the other end of that spectrum, there are people who do it kind of for the attention. Okay. Yeah. Almost. I can, because I can they're... Kinda, I can relate to that. They can be kind of a... I, I, so these people tend to be kind of narcissistic. Mm-hmm. And so they will, even though they have such a great life and they have everything they need and, you know, they're guaranteed a good job out of call. Like, they, just, they literally just have their setup. Sure. That they have this narcissism and they need the attention and they're like, and you know, it's, it even ties back to social media. Right. Like they see all their friends on Facebook who are having a good time. And that and just kind then of, then they realize, it. yeah. And then they realize, oh, I need to make sure, you know, people are realizing I'm having a good time. And then they'll go, oh, well, I'm depressed. And then they'll have a, a good day and they'll post uh-huh. their good day and it'll mm-hmm. look better than everyone else's good day because they're fighting depression. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it's like depression, I think, is a real big issue that a lot of people either don't look enough into or they look too much into it. Like some people shrug off depression and some people put way too much effort into their depression. They they focus in on it too much. Yeah. Yeah. They focus in on it and it becomes kind of like fan culture. Yeah, yeah, kind of <laughs> like what we talked about last time with uh, with fan, fanboys, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just going back to it, I've never used medication. I don't think I will need to use medication unless it gets much worse, which mm. at this point, I'm doing pretty fine. I have my good days, I have my bad days, but most importantly, I have days. Sure. I'm here. That's yeah. true. And that's Very what true. really counts. And typically, whenever I get into that depressed state of mind, I just not, not being a religious person, mm-hmm. I always kind of pull myself back and think, we like I, I just think about it and I'm like, we're on this giant fucking floating space rock. Mm-hmm. And that's the only thing there is like we are on a giant floating space rock that as far as I'm concerned is created by this extremely Dang. small off chance of science. Sure. And we're here. Okay. So what and this is going to sound bad again, but no, so ahead. whatever happens doesn't fucking matter right. to me. No, no. I mean, so it's it, like it makes sense. keeping it, that in mind. There's no reason for me to be mm-hmm. upset because I'm only going to be here for a, you know, maybe less seventy, than eighty a years. Of a percent yeah, le- of exactly. Of the lifespan. Less yeah, than less than anything. Like it, we sure. literally, we all, we are all literally dust in the wind. So, might so as I well, just don't want to get to me. Right, and just make make the day worth it. And yeah, exactly. Every day needs to be worth it, right. or else there's not a point, in my opinion, in living. So. Oh, sure. That's me getting really deep with you. Let's pass the medication conversation down to Evan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I need to breathe. There you go. That's fair. Enjoy your Thank day. you so much for sharing, Evan. I appreciate it. Of course, it. of course. Jeez. It's like you're going to get like 12 phone calls after this. Are you okay, Evan? Are you okay, Evan? Evan, right? Evan, Evan, Evan. The massive volume spike from you all. Goodness. What can <laughs> also, our listeners be real, thinking? Oh, real, <laughs> episode, real quick I was point. like screaming the whole time. I hate it when people get all up on you about your your issues oh they're just like what can i do not it's okay uh-huh. because a lot of those people do it because they care sure but a lot of those people don't and i hate that shit yeah <laughs> like if you've you... never heard from them and then you and then all of a sudden something bad happens and they're like oh i'm so sorry let me do something to help you out and then remember and then they that don't time we shared a soda because i had a little bit left over and i gave it to you and we spent that 15 minutes after school talking that's when that's was the, this? No, that's like I, the type I, of people. I that figured will, that was yeah. a hypothetical, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, I totally. And that, I haven't talked to you in seven years, and then I heard this bad thing happen, so I'm gonna reach out. To yeah, you like, and act like I'm a deep. Like for example, friend. whenever yeah. someone commits suicide, mm-hmm. and then you have their like, 
like if someone's getting bullied at school and they right. commit and they commit suicide oh, because yeah. of the bullying. The, okay. All of a sudden, the very bullies that were bullying them are all of a sudden. Oh, he was my best friend. Have, have you seen? I cared about him. Have you oh, seen World's Greatest Dad? The movie. Okay, it's a Robin Williams movie. It's it's more of kind of a uh, sadistic sort of dark humor movie, mm-hmm. and so thirty minute or I was gonna say thirty minute analysis of the movie. No, um, ten, ten second spiel. It's uh, Robin Williams has a real piece of shit kid. The kid's like into some freaky deaky porn, like German dungeon porn, and uh, he is totally socially outcasted. He's weird. No one likes him. And uh, he ends up uh, accidentally killing himself from autoerotic asphyxiation. Nice. And, um, and so literally there's a scene where his uh, Robin Williams comes in and his uh, his son is like hand on his dick, belt, whatever, just yeah. dangling there. And so uh, Robin Williams is a teacher at the school that his son goes to. Yeah. And he figured, OK, I can't I can't deal with this because I don't want the whole world to know that my son died from some I've, being yeah, a freak. Yeah. Somewhere. And so he just uh, he he dresses his kid back up and then uh tre- and essentially uh converts the whole thing into just a regular suicide okay. and he writes out this whole the, the, like this multi-page uh uh suicide note and um everybody in the school was like oh my gosh i didn't realize that this kid had a heart and was deep and philosophical and blah 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 <laughs> the same kids that were calling him a freak and calling him a yep. weirdo and stuff like uh-huh. that and it was it was a great movie and the ending uh kind of is just like a you get it, but it's still kind of a what the fuck ending. Yeah, and it's, that, and I mean that that example right there. That's a very real thing. Yeah. So, and it's unfortunate that some people can be that selfish as to where something you know tragic happens and they use it to garner attention. Exactly. It's it's terrible. And real quick, Evan, before we move on yeah. to you, um, you you mentioned uh when you talked about suicide, um, in and I would just expand that to any death. Um, yeah. I think it's really weird to keep people's like facebook social media still like active yeah no i agree passing. i think it's, it's fucking really strange weird. um it's almost like you just can't let go and it's just it, the fact that you're keeping up this and and i know because for example there's this one person who i believe he died i forget if it was a car accident or something i i don't i wasn't close to him so i would i didn't know yeah. i just know he died and um like all through his wall it's just like i miss you bro blah 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 whatever it's weird it's it freaks me out it's like yeah it's i I think it's so strange just deactivate the account delete it whatever and just remember him in a different way instead of remember him in an actual way yeah because it's like don't use his facebook as a memorial page exactly and it's just it's very strange to me i agree okay all right so i'm not the only one here i can see keep it keeping it up for like at most a month afterwards just to let to, to let, let everyone sort, get out their sort grief. through some of that but oh no it i think it's been oh my gosh it's probably been like three to four years and i think yeah, his no, facebook okay, is that's, still that's a fucked up. i think his facebook is still up so i mean i i, I could be fake newsing it but i last time i checked I um like a year ago i think it was mm-hmm. still up so um it was it was it, i don't know it, it, it kind of bugs me or it doesn't bug me necessarily understandable it's just, okay all right cool yeah. i'm not i'm not a weirdo who thinks no. i'm not a piece no, of shit no that's horrible human being who thinks that i mean like 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 imagine it like not on facebook imagine it on twitter like if i died and my twitter was still open i don't even use my twitter sure but if, if it was still open and it was like one of my buddy goes out to i don't know a bar and he's like hey man <laughs> missing you at evan rutledge yeah. and it's like that's fucking weird there's actually um and i think i mean Twitter's already pretty vapid anyway but yeah that's, yeah. that's pretty strange <laughs> um, but what what's even weirder is that uh through facebook you can um in the event that you die you can De- uh, make people the account holder of your facebook profile like they actually have a setting within facebook where what? if you pass away or you die um that you give this person a special password or something or a special login they log into your account and then it sets your facebook profile as like deceased Dead. or something what the yeah fuck? and then they can still post on your behalf or whatever it is huh i think it's very i strange. want someone to do that for me and just shit post every day <laughs> Just, <laughs> so just, so basically just keep the same thing going yeah yeah <laughs> yeah just missing all you guys not, not <laughs> that's the wrong evan <laughs> <laughs> all right so we were going on to evan yeah, with the fine. medication yeah, yeah. Talk now. I, I just, okay. you, you brought up facebook and i was just like oh yeah that's the thing yeah yeah but tangent saying, over yeah, evan medication time too. go we were right. like so the like, floor is yours the spotlight we have tangent shining. off the tangent off the tangent we're just trying to rebuild ourselves back up all right yep. so go ahead evan so uh, views and opinions Just, on medication versus also uh, uh, tangenting off again 
uh, like therapy or anything like that? Because um, no. for me personally, I've been to a therapist for a short period of time. I th- I thought it was beneficial, um, but going in kind of uh, trying to have a more holistic expectation of what you're getting out. It's not just yeah. like come to me and solve my problems. Like I yeah. I went in there with okay, I have this issue. Let's try and fix it. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I knew what I was trying to focus on. So again, leading to you, Evan, and <laughs> that whole broad umbrella scope of um, things. Yeah, um, I'm gonna continue the trend of haven't taken medication for anything. Okay. Um, definitely no risk of ADHD on my end, but um, only kind of fairly similar story to the um, antidepressants for the other Evan setup of I. I considered them for a time, but only as like a last resort kind of thing. Really? Um, obviously not an absolute last resort. Sure, but, sure, sure, sure. Uh, but, but yeah, they're just, I, d- I don't think I need these, sure. but I might move to them eventually. Okay. Um, now with regards to therapy, like you mentioned a bit ago, kind of similar deal. Saw, um, been seeing a therapist for a bit. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very, very much a situational thing. I think it does different things for different people, and I wouldn't go so far as to say it's even necessary. But oh, okay. Let's say you're somebody like me who opens up to literally no one. Okay. Um, it helps. Uh, you've opened up to me before. <clears throat> On like once. Yeah, but not in in eight years. Not in very serious Great detail. Friends. Or yeah, often. no, I'm just, yeah. I'm just messing with you. Um, and so it it just kind of helps to have somebody. He's still wearing like, shoes. He can't even open up his feet to oh my, my God. room. <laughs> he, okay, hold on. He <laughs> does one. this everywhere. Are you serious? <laughs> Literally, this dude would like come over to my apartment before we moved in together. Yeah. He and like we'd be like partying or something. Okay, hold on. Never mind. If you're partying, you can wear shoes all sure. day. That's fine. Okay. But like he'd come over and like end up staying the night. We'd stay up playing like a crappy like World of Warcraft private server. Or sure, some sure, shit. sure, sure, sure. And this dude would wear <laughs> shoes until like two in the morning, and I'd be like, "All right, man, I'm going to bed." And he's like, "Okay, cool." Takes off his shoes, leaves his socks on, goes to bed, wakes up, come outside my room, dude's wearing shoes again. And I'm like, serious? what's going on? <laughs> I just, I, I can't. buy comfortable shoes, well, guys. What is that? You, as respect. you are taking your you shoes off. You reminded me. You reminded me to take them off. I'm I sorry. Just, I don't know. I, like, I get inside my house and I'm just, shoes are off. I, barefoot, like, I can't. I, and that's why I hate hardwood floors. I know we've totally just tainted it off, but no, I really fine. hate hardwood floors because uh, my feet get all gross. They're, they're and very like uncomfortable. That. He's calling you, yeah. Vol. Hey. Someone from Salina. <laughs> I don't know. I get random phone calls from people who are like, hello, would you like to purchase uh, roof insurance? Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. And I was like, no, thank you. Don't call this ever. And I don't I don't own a credit card. I have gotten so many okay. calls about information about my credit card. This is a call. <laughs> in for more. Don't worry. Your credit card's fine. But please call this number so we can get the information sorted. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'd hate it. Anyways, you call it and it's like, uh, can I get uh, your credit IRS card? Calls, so that was fun. Oh, nice. I get, I've gotten those as well. I um, get a lot of calls from the Marriott. Yo, yes. I've, I've yeah. yes. Oh, I've yep. never gotten calls from Marriott. Uh huh. It's it's a fake. Thank you it's for fake. choosing oh. Marriott hotels. Yeah, it's fake. But <laughs> oh, I've I've done like you've just won a vacation for two I or hate something those. like that. Give us a call and blah blah blah. Uh, okay. Um, anyways, Evan, therapy. So you, opening you, up. You except not your shoes. I <laughs> I do not open my shoes. So having somebody who I will He's almost somebody. certainly never see, except for this like hour every couple of weeks that I am paying them for. Uh-huh. Just, just kind of as a sounding board sometimes helps. Okay. You don't have to pay me, dude. You can open up to me any day of the week. Yeah, but then you, then you know shit about him, and then you can use it against him. But I would never use it against <laughs> them. The dude's my heterosexual life mate. <laughs> That's true. I, I think uh, I think you should be. More I mean, open dude, you to... you have so much on me. You could use against me right now. That is very. I true. don't have I shit. Know, but... I mean, I know you. Wouldn't. I don't. I don't talk. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. The only time I can as, get this dude I mean, to talk is when we drink. As you've kind of seen throughout this podcast, it's kind of sense. just been you guys bouncing back and forth with me throwing. Yeah, that's why it's your turn. Keep talking. Yeah, keep All talking. Right. Here I am. <laughs> right. Hey, keep talking about uh, therapy and medication. Well, what's your opinion on medication? So, do I, I know yay, you said yay, you're are not... you a weak, pathetic loser for taking medication? I I think I'm just going to tie this back to kind of what I was saying earlier. I think a lot of just mental illnesses are overdiagnosed right now, and I think okay. that just medication for mental illness mm-hmm. is a very dangerous thing. Just having family in medical background stuff that messes with your brain chemistry is not something you should be That's fucking around true. with. Yeah, I um, 
I know someone who literally like antidepressants and stuff like that. They've had to go from different medication to different medication, and like the transitions really horrible. And you you know you can get addicted to them. Some of them, and yeah. It's just it's a to get off of them and then get back on them is just a painful process. So. And yeah, that's another thing about medication that scares me is even if it did make me feel better while I was using it, mm-hmm. I don't want the you don't want to deal with withdrawal. Yeah, withdrawal exactly. Even, like, I don't want I don't want to like take my medication to make me happy and then forget it one day and just have a worse than usual day because I didn't take my medication. That's like that true. just, that doesn't sound like a fun yeah. time to me That's true because I'm forgetful. So well, I'm going to forget it. And, but, and I think, I think we're all fortunate enough to not be at that threshold of like, you know, we're going to have a, such a fucked up life if we don't seek some of that. I think the mm-hmm. fact that we have yeah. the ability to choose and we kind of have, we, we are all very call, fortunate. Call it, mm-hmm. call it, you know, own personal strength or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're fortunate to have that avenue where it's there if we need it, but we don't. And yeah. it kind of sucks for the people that have that to have kind it. Kind of, exactly. yeah. Like so, they're required to have it. Right. Or else. And I like, feel for those people. Right. Um, so funneling into uh, something else, uh, since you're saying a lot of stuff is recent in terms of these uh, uh, analysis and different me- and over mental diagnosis, um, over diagnosis and stuff like that. Um, what do you guys think about uh, glucose and uh, 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 gluten free and stuff like that? I think it's a load of crap. I think so too. <laughs> like, have you seen the well, South Park episode on it? I've seen all of them, but remind me which one. It's the one where they uh, they quarantine people on the Papa John's because if you eat too much glu- gluten, your dick explodes and flies I off. I thought it was like at a uh, wasn't it a Dunkin' Donuts or something? No, nah, it was Papa John's. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I'm thinking yeah. a different one. Right. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think it was. Mr. Garrison goes uh, gluten free, and he's talking about how great it is. Yeah, and some, and then there's like a scientist, and he's like, "No, see, gluten free isn't a thing. I can drink this gluten, and I'll be just fine." He drinks it, and his dick flies off. And then they start quarantining anybody who's had gluten. That's it's and really it, it's something. Th- it's that's what I like about South Park is they mm. take current events and they oh, over sure. dra- oh, over yeah. dramatize the fuck out of it. Yeah, of course, it's great. Now um, I do, yeah, that was just I do actually have input on this one because my aunt actually has celiac, so. Eating, eating, this is different. Yeah, this, yes. is, this is different. Okay. Um, this is an actual di- disease, everybody. Uh-huh. All right. Now, real quick, uh, for those ignorant like me, what is celiac disease? I'll again? look up an exact definition, but go ahead please, and explain. Please do look up the exact definition, but the long I, story short is the, the disease is more or less the reason that gluten-free diets exist. exist. Okay. You, you can't... I'm Process pretty sure it. it basically is just you can't digest it properly, Okay. so she actually needs to so eat separate the, foods from the rest of the family, which is really great because her husband's a vegetarian so sure. it's, it's just really fun dieting uh concepts <sighs> okay. for the entire family uh celiac disease for everybody who does not know the definition myself included a disease in which the small intestine is hypersensitive to gluten leading to difficulty in digesting food containing gluten so when you okay because my my thing is and i don't know if it's just because i'm ignorant but like um when you say trouble digestion, is it just like, ooh, I've got gas? Or it's like, oh my gosh, I'm in severe pain. I'm I'm pretty sure it is worse than like your typical la- lactose intolerance. Okay, so it's like worse yeah. than... Cause yeah. I think it's like... Like, like you, you know how become... lactose intolerance is kind of an allergy? Sure. It's a, I mean, it is an allergy to milk, right. but it doesn't really... It, it you're hurt. not going to die. You're not going to die. Yeah. Right. I... It, well, I, I'm not sure if you will die from eating gluten as mm-hmm. someone with celiac disease, but I'm fairly certain you it will, is much more You painful. will get okay. physically ill. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. It's probably like food poisoning if I were to just imagine right off the sure. bat. And beer has gluten in it. Yes, because mm-hmm. is no, any, any any wheat based most any wheat product. Okay, yeah, has yeah. just right. about every wheat product. Cool, cool. Well, not cool for those, but but yeah. yeah. So, um, but and in regards to it being like a just fad diet kind of thing, mm-hmm. eating gluten free does not make you healthier. Okay, it, like this. He mentioned the scientist in the South Park episode, but it's it's a serious thing. Like nutritionally, gluten has no real negative value to it okay i mean would you from say, what uh, we know i mean none mm-hmm. of none of us are a disclaimer none of us are actual scientists well, sure. here yeah, certainly but yeah but not in that a, field i so you'd say it's not positive not negative it's just there it's a thing it's a yeah. it's a it's a thing that you can extract there is, and yeah I, w- I would say that like assuming you don't have a condition related to it mm-hmm. there is really no um, there's no reason to have a gluten-free diet. Okay. Yeah. And then what about GMOs? Now, that one I'm a bit, that one I'm opinionated about, but have not a lot to back it up. Okay. Um, well, because... let me hear your opinion. Come on, man. Yeah. It's a millennial bitch fest. <laughs> hey, this isn't a bitch fest. This, this is, is true. This is okay. No, it's because... a discussion. This is a good discussion. We now. move from bitching to discussing. Yeah. Um, so or just the, the idea, talking. <laughs> the idea behind genetically modified organisms, generally speaking, is like to, me. 
I mean, really the reason that people spend a lot of money developing them is because they're profitable, because mm. you're able to grow more crops for cheaper, because you're you are I literally was enjoying that background. You are literally making your crop stronger. Right. You, you with growing populations, you're gonna need to do something to sustain it and Yeah, and it's it's only kind of a matter of sustainable farming really, but it does it does help with that. Like sure. genetically modifying stuff is in reasonably excellent way to um to like to help the whole world hunger issue okay and just a quick question i'm gonna interject real quick yeah um gmos Your interjection has been denied go ahead okay well i'm going anyway um gmos haven't i mean the the term obviously has not been a widely used term for a long time sure it is a more recent thing uh-huh. but i mean if we're talking about genetically modifying an organism to do something that you want it to do better mm-hmm. can't you go back to i mean basically the dark ages with this mm-hmm. not the dark ages literally but to not you know, people is not an extreme people example, basically yes. splicing together plants that, yeah, to have pretty much more crop or you know better like bigger leaves or yeah. whatever the fuck yeah, it is but i mean it, it's a different process and but i think that's a lot of concept just conceptually but, close but I think, yeah it's ba- basically the current uh genetic modification setup is taking that to the extreme where you're literally going into the genetic you're actually splicing and, dna and that picking point. with yeah it. yeah right yeah and and i think i think with that um at least up until recently i think we've been able to because you you know you want your crops to be able to survive through mm-hmm. harsh uh harsh conditions and stuff like that and be able to and so i think that's just better farming but specifically saying okay we want this carrot to you know be seven times the length but you know the width is it's just a super slim carrot for whatever reason, for better chopping or something like that. that. I think that's more of genetically modifying it to meet a certain need, not just yeah. making it a better product. Or yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah. j- just, it is it is important to note, like, I'm, I'm generally in favor of GMOs, just uh-huh. just in general. Sure. But it, it is worth noting that the companies that have the money to be doing this are doing this because it will make their, because it will make their, what they're making more profitable. Sure. In, in the end. It's, it's the, yeah. It's all boils just down to the fact dollar. Of, it's a fact of capitalism. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that that I and I, and I do I I agree on the front that I think GMOs can be a good thing. Okay. Um, I mean, if if we're if we're looking at literally, you can make this plant better. It will be able to make more produce so that you can sell slash provide more food to the people of the world. Sure. With no downsides. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I think that's where the discussion comes is, is where what the, the down, down is. Yeah. What are the downsides? Yeah. And when do we find out about them? Right. Because, I mean, if we've because been doing GMOs what we, for the last 30 years. Mm-hmm. From what we know, or from what we know as the public, GMOs don't really have a downside. Mm-hmm. Besides the fact that it takes money to make. Sure. And, you know, it's it's a lot of work. The, but The only notable thing I can think of that would be, like, this is something that could go wrong is just how you how mutation occurs is it's when mm-hmm. just the dna copying process it gets screwed up somewhere so there is to some extent an increased risk of mutation with these things okay but yeah at the at the same time it's it's no different than say breeding dogs or anything like that just on a more accelerated scale okay hmm. that makes sense i don't yeah. know i don't really like dog breeding but i get the example dog yeah it, it's a good example but yeah, I, I agree i don't really like dog breeding either <laughs> It's kind of fucked up. So. But yeah, I mean, overall, I think GMOs are a good thing. All right. As long as they're made responsibly. <laughs> I don't want any fucking monster corn around here. Made responsible <laughs> GMOs. Um, all right. Well, then, uh, keeping in the realm real quick, and then we're going to backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. I forget what level we're needed going at. But um, we've tangented quite a few times. It's okay. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll get back much, to our shit job We're stories. pretty much on new Sweet. conversation. Well, I'm excited I, for that. Oh, okay, so we've got to talk about the uh, big red ones. button and okay. job stories. Okay, big um, red button. Okay. Hold yeah, on. Unless, you, no, want to, unless no, you want to go somewhere. No, it's okay. It, honestly, it doesn't. At, at this point, it, it doesn't really matter the order. So, big red button. Okay. One. Um, I think right now I'm just going to spew out what I've read slash my opinions on this. Um, one, uh, China needs North Korea as a buffer state between uh, South Korea and themselves. Um, so I do think if North Korea does launch any kind of uh, local ballistic missiles to South Korea, we're going to have to intervene because mm. oh, um, yeah. as them being our allies, they're going to expect that of us. We're going to intervene. I mean, um, we're also going to intervene no matter what because we're the USA. This is true. We are the global <laughs> police. Um, so either I'm not I'm not sure if we would ever do boots on the ground or do drone strikes. But I think the fact that uh, through the Obama administration, there have been so much anti drone strikes, especially dealing with shit in Syria. Um, I definitely think that we might do boots on the ground, at least small, small task force, you know, Navy SEALs, some bullshit like that. Well, just 
very mm-hmm. small, isolated. Um, I think I don't I don't know I don't know to if kind we, of keep the peace. But, but even 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 we if if there was any kind of um, indication that North Korea would be arming uh, nuclear warheads or you know. Uh, 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 gas warheads or anything like that i think we'd have to occupy north korea and that's not going to strike well with china and no I, no not at all it's definitely i i don't i don't want to say it's going to be a quote-unquote cold war but i definitely think within trump's presidency there will be a some type war. of militaristic yeah. militaristic action on our part the there are decent odds of that the the main reason that i don't see well uh, okay North Korea is currently the basically the biggest international issue we have right now, but it's nothing even close to the scale of the Cold War because they're as hilariously small as they are. This is true. They're, they pra- they literally share a border border with China. They practically share a border with Russia. And, of course, by sharing a border with South Korea, you could argue that they share a border with us. Sure. They're, yeah. Um, That's a good point. Um, I like the way you said that. The, the basic idea is even if they have nuclear capabilities they can't bring them to bear in any way that doesn't get them annihilated practically glassed yeah. right and but the question you have to ask is how how much do they care about that because if they're waging war and saying death to all americans and death to all allies to america you know how how true is their you know dictatorship uh sticking to that's because because i a friend of uh, zach uh he he Obviously, it's you have uh, Kim Jong Un as the puppet, essentially, and you have his uh, party um, that they're in power. They have this wealthy lifestyle, and they get what they want. So, yeah. how are they going to willing to risk that? I personally think that sure they might be exploiting, and sure they might be doing the shit. But when push comes to shove, they're not. They're going to the more sanctions we put on it, you're kind of backing a dog to a corner here, and they're going to they're going to retaliate somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Um, to how they do it and when they do it i think just with like i said i think within trump's president uh, within the first term of his presidency um real talk i really do think he's going to be elected a second term just because everyone's blowing the shit out of proportions but depending on how he handles this presidency i think that'll definitely kickstart him to campaign again for his but that's a whole different conversation mm-hmm. i think that something would have to dramatically change for mm-hmm. trump to realistically be reelected unless right. there is a hilarious failure from both parties to find a better candidate but well, but i think okay all right well, that's that's a whole nother sure, story sure, sure, sure. and we'll, we'll come back to that but um i think from based on what i've read a lot of the reason behind nuclear pro- proliferation in north korea behind working on this technology is not it's really the point is not to take these nuclear warheads and use them to destroy our enemies they if they don't know that's not feasible, then their ruling power is in the dark, which is not something that we've known from them previously. Sure. The Realistically, it seems like more of a domestic issue to me, whereas the ruling power wants to stay in power, so they want to demonstrate that they are... that. Look at us, we're North Korea, we are still mm-hmm. a global power. Sure. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> were they ever a global power? That's... Well, that's... <laughs> remember that they see their... Yes. That the, most of their yes. populace sees their leader as a god. Uh, yeah, they, as they need literally to, a god, yes. They need to project... They need to project this image of power. Sure. Yeah, and so they need to true. do that on as big a scale as they can. And so I mean, I think, but you can't see, they just accomplish that with censorship? And only censorship? Like, do they... Yes and no. Do they really need to come out here and flex? Well, I mean, I, well, I think, I think, um, like sun's out, guns out. No. Well, I think, uh, I, I can definitely see, uh, in terms of showing, you know, showing, flexing their muscles and showing this off. I think definitely, uh, I, and I, I'm not sure how well global communication and global radio and information spread, but countries in like Africa and countries in like South America, if they hear that, oh shit, these guys got nukes and we don't have nukes, then, um, I, I think, and I think that's what they're at least I, I don't know where you're going with, or I, I understood kind of where you were going with that but okay. in, in my mind that make that makes sense cuz to China and Russia and to the most of Europe and the United States I, you know I obviously we don't see them as a global power mm-hmm. but you know you know you have some BFE nowhere place in Africa hearing about North Korea and the yeah. scary nukes then you know, that poses a threat to them that's mm-hmm. true and i that's kind of another way you could spin it is North Korea kind of Pushing every pushing everyone towards nuclear proliferation instead sure. of just like 
the United States, Russia, most of Europe, sure. those few other places having access to them. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where we run into this weird little turmoil spot we're in of um, we can't really do a whole lot to prevent it besides saying, hey, you really shouldn't do that. Hey, stop that. Without yeah. Stop it. <laughs> without that whole Cold War issue of if you nuke us, we'll nuke you right back coming right. into play. Right. But I definitely will. So would you agree with me if something's going to happen before the end of Trump's presidency? I I don't know if I would go so far as to say that. I don't okay. I don't think I just the, my, I don't think from a military perspective something is actually going to happen unless North Korea is a lot more ballsy than I think they are. It's just you you see you see the acceleration within probably you just look at the last 7 years or, okay, let's say if, when when did I start high, 2010 uh, 2010 around that time it was essentially when King Jong Il passed which yeah. I think is like 2010 2011 I forget yeah um, I think it's a little bit more recent but yeah go on no I, I'm pretty sure it was in all fact tw- okay thank you for go judging ahead. all right um, we were in high school I remember that much but carry yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you um, and so I think definitely uh, there's been a dramatic acceleration in terms of uh, re- researching for uh, uh, weapons and uh, kind of what oh what year sorry one second oh my gosh. Um, so, uh, researching weapons and, um, kind of getting more angry, essentially 2011. Thank you. Boom. I got it. This uh, almost 2012. It was, oh, okay. It was December, December 17th. Okay. All right. Um, but I, but I think definitely within you, you look at probably the last 10 years, I think a lot of this, uh, research and testing and all these, uh, uh, military, uh, uh, uh practices or whatever you call yeah. them happened within the last couple of years and so i think this time it's just expanding and uh just it's good it's going faster and faster and faster and that's why i think um and and that's why i think something something's gonna happen again like i said i don't know what specifically but i there's gonna be some type of military action who fucking knows i mean russia might come out of the blue and just fucking storm uh north korea and just take it over and which i don't think china wants either but i don't know for sure i think (laughs) i think they would rather that happen than us take it that's possible. I, I think that's mm-hmm. a more realistic, or I don't know, I wouldn't say realistic, I think, but I think that's a better outcome for yeah, them. Yeah, I think if any country is actually going to put boots on the ground in North Korea and not just bomb the ever-living crap out of them if they mm-hmm. try anything, it's going to be China, not us. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, you think they just try and quell? Because I've always, at least in terms of uh, uh, reports and articles and BS that you read. I, yeah, you, I always thought the relationship was China's the big brother, North Korea is the little toddler, and China always says, "Just stop it, just sh- stop it." And then to everyone else, they say, "We got it. Don't worry. He's 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 no harm." And I, yeah, you know, I always that, I always mm-hmm. picture that's the relationship. So. But I I think he ha- Evan has a point though because honestly, if it if it gets that bad to where North Korea is threatening nuclear war and it's like it's not just a threat anymore sure and you know they're actually about to bite they're done barking mm-hmm. it would probably be the best obviously the best outcome for china mm-hmm. for china to invade because okay. they're already kind of in that position where they try to keep north korea i guess under wraps or sure. from becoming an issue mm-hmm. so i mean what's the best way to keep it from becoming an issue than just... deploying your men in there and just mm-hmm. kind of annexing it at that point okay I, I guess i guess realistically thinking i mean I, I would rather have China there than North Korea, honestly, just because <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think China is more predictable in the long run. But um, yeah, um, and then um, I don't know. Do you guys have any closing thoughts on that? I just I always like talking about potential global nuclear. Yeah, war. I mean, my, yeah. my I just as a closing thought, I think if nuclear war starts, it's it's global annihilation at that point. Really, end of the oh, world I, type shit. I, I I really do think so. I yeah. think if if we were to get into an actual nuclear war in which bombs were dropped, I think the world would be over. Okay. Because I think once, because there you know there is there is a system in the U.S. or in Russia. There, I know there's a country that has a system that basically if if there's a nuke coming, then we're just nuking everyone then else. They have nukes targeting all the major cities of that country. Sure. Like it's it's got to be a thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm I sure think, we've got some disaster plan going on. I think if there's anywhere that it wouldn't happen, it's probably North Korea. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't think North Korea would be the one to start that global annihilation. But I think that if two world powers were to get into a war, oh yeah, and it came down to nuclear warfare, I think the world would be over. Yes, or at least, but I, I there would be, be so much damage, the world would be forever fucked. Oh, sure, of course. But I think, I think, I think we're not even close to being there yet. Oh no, use. not at all, not at all. Sure, napalm. I, I, sure gas bombs yeah. sure mustard gas Age, sure. agent orange whatever you know yeah, white whatever. phosphorus go ahead sure 
What's the Geneva Convention? We talked about this last time too. Did we? Do we? Yeah, we did. We, we, very briefly. Very. Remember briefly. that Albert Einstein quotes? Yeah, the one the, from Call of Duty Four. Yeah, I don't know what what weapons World 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 War Three will be fought with, but I know that World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. Yeah. 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 Let's just bring that up every <laughs> every single podcast <laughs> that you and I are here together. It's gonna, gonna happen. Gonna bring that up. Um, it's a good quote, though. It is. It really I is. Do, I do like that quote, um, and especially because it's like Call of Duty Four came out when. Well, I mean, Albert Einstein fucking was like ten years ago, probably for Call of Duty Four. Albert Einstein came out ten. Years yeah, ago. you're right. Yeah, he's gay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, uh, tangenting off of all of this, um, t- not so tangenting, just skipping into a new topic. Um, yeah. <clears throat> What do you guys think about like super hyper realistic dreams slash nightmares? I'll give you an example. This morning I woke up because I had a nightmare about a spider and I fucking hate spiders. I fucking hate spiders. I literally jumped out of my bed and I turned on the lights and I got my flashlight and I was scanning my bed because I thought there was a spider in my bed. Just like it was so realistic. And um, I've definitely been guilty of um, making things look differently in the dark. So, Uh um, you know, I'll definitely, if I just wake up from a nightmare about, it's generally, uh, uh, zombies, like, like a super hyper realistic thing about me getting eaten alive by zombies. doesn't happen all the time, but on, (laughs) on, on it has happened in the past. Every single night. (laughs) Um, but more, more, more frequently I'll have just random nightmares about just spiders not even like crazy giant like, scary spiders yeah. just like just realistic like hand-sized spiders yeah, that like, you absolutely don't like, want uh, anywhere like near a you. black widow or whatever like a brown recluse yeah. yeah whatever it is and i think I just, spiders are really cool personally Sorry. well i mean sure they have cool features and attributes but i just fuck it's, you up. It's they, true. they will so um have you guys ever had experiences like that because like i've woken up in cold sweats before oh absolutely not recently but okay like, i'm just it's, um, it's happened to tie it back to work uh-huh. We have a little tone that goes off whenever you personally receive a phone call. Okay. And it's da da dun dun da dun da dun. That's exactly what it sounds like. Okay. I have literally had dreams where I've been asleep. It's been a nice, happy dream. Uh-huh. And I'm just walking by a phone and that tone goes off. And really? I have woken up in cold sweats <laughs> from hearing really? that. I uh, honestly, I think working in a call center has affected me psychologically. Wow. Like that's that was like some hardcore Pavlov's bell shit right yeah. there, where I heard it. I woke up. I sat right up. I took a deep breath. I was in cold sweats, and I was just like, <sighs> it was four in the morning. Damn. And I was it was, freaked me out, man. I mean, I've had kind of similar experiences um, in terms of like being late for work. Like I'll yeah. just have a dream, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm late for work. Oh my god, oh my god. Wait, it's Saturday. God damn it. Like, yeah. Or like. <laughs> Or, like, for example, you know how um, if you ever took, like, psychology in high school, mm-hmm. like, the shitty high school psychology course yeah, where they sure. take, where they teach you about Pavlov, mm-hmm. and then they actually, like, they tell you, like, whenever the bell goes off, your heart rate jumps up. Sure. It, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. If, if my phone goes off and I'm asleep, or if I'm at work and I'm, you know, resting my eyes and I hear the phone go off, it's an instant jump. Sure. Every time. So and, you- I, and so it's at the point where I hear that. And internally, it like freaks me out. <laughs> See, with me, the phone, I sleep through my phone. Like, so you can, so do I you usually. can be calling me, and I'll have I'll have my phone generally on vibrate, but I'll have them sometimes on loud or whatever on noise, whatever you want to call it. And I'll wake up, or I won't wake up, but then I'll wake up in the morning, and then I'll say, "Oh, I got three missed calls from someone," and I just like sleep through it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I do um, that. A it's lot a, as it's well. a lot of internal stuff for me. Where again, I have a dream about a spider, and literally, because I think from what I remember this this morning was. I, I had a dream and I was walking down a hallway or something and it wasn't even like a spider was in my face. It was like in the corner of like <laughs> the, of the a crevice or something like that. And uh, there was a spider there and I was freaking out because I had to walk past it and I woke up and then the spider was my bed and I was just like, ah, so <laughs> the spider was my bed. The spider. Yes. This, I was on a spider. I was sleeping on a spider. That's, but, that's um, unfortunate. So hyper realistic dreams. Um, that's one for me. One for you, Evan. Um, I really normally don't have them, but there was one distinctly like a couple of nights ago where uh, just just this really weird thing where I just, you know, it was just a normal day. I was walking through the park, but it turned out I could fly and not like not like Superman fly. Just yeah. like I had like, did you have glider to flap wings your or arms? Something. Oh, yeah, damn. exactly. OK, sweet. okay <laughs> awesome. Real quick. Whenever I fly in my dreams, I swim. Like I just make this sw- like a freestyle <laughs> swim motion. And that's how I fly. That's pretty I fucking great. love it. It's amazing. But yeah, that was. And that's like, that is the only such dream I can ever remember having where it's like, this is vivid and realistic besides this one pretty significant detail. (laughs) 
I've had a hyper realistic dream. Well, okay. Have you guys ever had those dreams where you're just like walking down the sidewalk and then like the sidewalk no. just falls out from under you and no. it turns out you're falling off the bed while you're asleep? No. You never had no like seriously. I don't. Though. I, my, I, I sleep in big beds. I don't fall out of my bed. I sleep in the same size bed as you. Oh, do. really? Yes. I sleep in a bigger bed. I roll around. I don't. Okay. Have you ever had that? No. Okay, I have yes, I have had hyper realistic dreams where I'll be walking down the sidewalk or like uh-huh. about to like uh you know step down a curb. Yeah. And the ground just falls out from under me and before I know it, I'm and this will be like me like I'm sure like hanging off my bed while I'm thinking this. Right. And then I'll finally lose my balance and fall off my bed and I'll wake up on the ground in, in a cold sweat because sure. I just fell, you know, into the center of the earth in my sure. dream and woke up, opened my eyes and it's just oh, I'm on the floor. I have, I will say, I have, when I was a kid, um, probably like elementary school, um, I have woken up on the floor, but I just roll off and plop and that's it. And yeah, yeah. I'll just wake up normally. Like, yeah, I don't we, even remember we my just kind of sleep through it. But yeah. um, I will say something kind of similar is sometimes like when I'm in the process of falling asleep, I will suddenly just feel like I am actually falling and yes. just get like yes. jolted awake by yes. that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had I've had dreams or not necessarily dreams, but um, moments moments where I'm like, and it's not when I'm trying to fall asleep. Like if yeah. I'm just if I'm playing games or if I'm watching a movie or whatever it is, and just I'm supposed to be awake at this time, but then I see myself drifting off. I have this super, and I don't know if it's just because I've I haven't necessarily ever been in a car accident before, but like I've been in a situation where I've hit something and my car gets fucked up i've yeah. never been hurt or anything like that Same here. um but i've always get this like uh and it's almost like the same image that, like all the time and um i'll be closing my eyes and then i'll kind of be in that in between state of awake and then about to fall asleep yeah. and i'll get jolted awake because i see this crystal clear image of me hitting a brick wall with my car and it just and i freak out and sometimes i'll just be laying in bed reading on my phone or reading yeah. about to fall asleep and then, like, my heart will just be racing, and it's it's the worst feeling in the entire world. I that's crazy. It. It's And it's just – and I don't know. It's always just and, – and that's what freaks me out because then it's like – especially then when I am dreaming, it's like I don't know if I'm really driving my car in real life or not, especially when it is kind of those hyper-realistic dreams. So, I don't know. It's just – it's it's freaky-deaky, dude. Yeah. So, Evan, you're just the most normal out of all of us. Moral of the story? I like to think so, but oh, okay. <laughs> um, I See, also used, why he's the good Evan. I also used to have like night terrors as a kid, like where it's okay. It, define it night terror, because okay, like, basically I've had nightmares. what what a what a night terror is is it's just kind of a nightmare plus where it's so realistic and you just feel like you're trapped. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, just here's my example. I'll sure. never forget this night nightmare night night terror, whatever you do want to call it. They are basically the same one. Sure, it's just worse. Um, this is a weird one. Okay. I was outside of my my house, my dad's house, and there Are was you awake just... or asleep? This is a dream? This was a dream. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, I was asleep. Okay. Um, but it, it felt like a normal day. Sure, it felt sure, just sure. like a normal Saturday, not at school or anything like that. Right. And this, this was when I was a young kid, probably like first grade, second grade. Okay. I There were giant ants. And oh. I'm talking like, like school bus uh-huh. ants. And, like, I've never even been afraid of ants. I sure. love ants. They're fucking cool. But fucking ants. school bus-sized ants right. that shot lasers out of their antenna. Wow. I'm okay, dead. That just sounds like a nightmare. Dead serious. This okay. was this is still, to date, the worst nightmare I have ever had. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Don't know where it came from. It's never happened again. Well, I'm not afraid of ants or lasers, generally, sure. but... <laughs> oh, I'm definitely afraid of lasers. No, um... So, because when, whenever I hear night terror, um... And this is the only example that i can relate it to i have a friend who um and he told me the story and it freaked me the fuck out just listening to it where um spe- and i guess i don't know if there's specific uh uh branches of a different night terror that you can have but essentially he uh had some kind of dream it was a bad dream i forget what it was but he but he woke up he was awake he was paralyzed couldn't move sleep paralysis and he looked at the towards the edge of his bed and he saw this creature mm-hmm coming up from the bed and crawling on him, getting closer and closer with some fucked up demon face or yeah, whatever. That's so sleep paralysis. Okay. So that's not where like night terrors necessarily. It's, it's in the, it's once again, it's pretty like much the same, the same umbrella. Um, it's basically where, and I don't know psychological terms for it, but mm. you, 
You're just you can't. You're, you're awake functions. enough to realize that you are in your room and you can see, uh-huh. but you are having auditory and Visuals. visual hallucinations. Oh, okay. Basically, your your mind is in a state where you are hallucinating about something that you are basically terrified of. Wow. And some people get them more often than others. I personally never had one. I've read, read a lot of stories about it because yeah. it's interesting to me. Sure. But it's it just sounds terrifying. Wow. Where and where you you know it's where basically your brain's awake yeah. and your eyes work. Right. But you can't move. Damn. Yeah. I, I, you're kind I, of in that in-between state. It's right. almost like you're in a coma, but you can see. Sure. I ha- And I have had an actual dreams where I just can't move or I can't talk. Have yeah. you ever in your dreams? Like, oh, I've, I've had. You're yeah, absolutely. You're, <sighs> like that's. Oh, God. You, uh, the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have. It, it's so it's so horrible because and I, and thank God I haven't had them recently. And fuck, I'll probably have it tonight. I used to get those. <laughs> that's that's talking, you're talking about. about yeah. But, um, but yeah, some of those dreams. <laughs> your mind's going like to be like, I heard you wanted to uh, go, go revisit that. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's re- I find it super fascinating, but super fucked up the shit that your brain can do. And like, <clears throat> I, I know it's bullshit. The, you, we only actually use 10% of our brain blow. No, we mm-hmm. use a hundred percent. Cause yeah, whatever. Just at different times. It's sure. not all firing at once. Right, right, right. But I always thought like, have you guys seen the movie Lucy or whatever with, no. uh, Scarlett Johansson? Just seen the trailers. Yeah. I okay. So pretty about. much the movie, do you know of the movie? Okay. So pretty much, uh, she, gets the full potential of her whole brain and she uh, fully utilizes it because of some drug like okay. she she get and it's a fucked up premise like she gets kidnapped and uh she becomes a drug mule and so they, like mk ultra i've never seen the movie it's not in the movie it's oh. a conspiracy theory oh okay go well, on they cut her open and store drugs inside of her and they were going to send her off to like tokyo or something and uh she escapes and gets kicked in the stomach which opens up the bag of drugs and so they all fall okay that's retarded yeah and so uh <laughs> And so then all of a sudden she, these are super enhanced drugs or whatever. And yeah. they, and so, um, super she's, weed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Super, just yeah. super dank yeah. marijuana. Um, <laughs> so, and so, uh, she was able to access and get a, f- use more of her brain power. And then, uh, I think the movie ended where she become a pile, she, she become, uh, she, became. she turned into a pile of goop. I think oh, or wow. something like that. Huh. So it, it was just like same. It was so like uh, uh, out there. It, the concept was out there, and it was kind of like this out of body experience she was having, and then she was like this elevated sense of we just a blah 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 goop, and then just became goop or something. Nice. Morgan Freeman was in the movie. Mm. Yeah, oh, he was nice. actually he was like a professor who was researching brain utilization. I have I have one more on the dreams. Sure, go ahead. Um, this, this no, is the, I don't want to talk a... about dreams anymore. Just okay, cool, cool, okay. sweet, awesome. Well, go ahead. Uh, you know okay. um this is a this is not not nightmare related this is actually just like this a, just a, a really, good dream yeah it was just a good dream but I like the dreams. sense of time in that dream was completely skewed um normally in in a dream for me at least i can kind of tell you know minutes hours i can i can feel it sure but in this dream this dream literally was three years long like it was three, what? it was three years of my life. What? Yeah. What? It was just, it was just me at my current day and age. Yeah. And then I just had three years of life. What? And then I woke up. No. I'm dead serious. No. I'm dead serious. No. When was this? This was when I was seventeen or eighteen. No. Yeah. No. I, I literally lived out until I was twenty or twenty one. No. And then I woke up. You're I, lying. I know. I'm dead Spooky, serious. You're lying. I am dead serious. Just tell me you're lying. No. so that I can live my life. No, it's not. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It's not like I like lived out like this moment or anything. Sure. It was just. It was just as if I was doing my day to day thing. Oh, so it was kind of like a, a montage, and then I guess. You're but not it, telling me you like went to bed in your dream, woke up, wouldn't have the next day, and you did this. Three, I mean, obviously, obviously, because it is a dream, there are those those details of everyday things that are left out. But like when I started the dream, I was my 18 year old Evan. Uh-huh. When I ended the dream, I was 20 or 21 years old. I can't believe that. I want to, but I it's can't. true. I can't. That's so fucked up. We got on the topic, so I'm sharing my. Experience. No, I know, no, and that's totally fine. It's just, it's so like. How could you go back to that? Like you're like <laughs> I'm 21. I can do a lot oh, of I for, things. I with forgot my life. most of it. Okay. Yeah. I Except just, that you knew that you were 21. I just knew it happened. Sure. Yeah. Like I woke up and I was like, and you know, you know, when you wake up from a dream and you can catch details. Yeah. But then even after catching them, you still lose them later because sure. you wake up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was that. Damn. I all all I really caught was the time frame. 
that would be honestly i would love to see that like if they do it right like a movie where some guy falls asleep and like continues his life and lives like 20 years falls in yeah. love has kids like the whole yeah. the 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 white picket fence and everything and then one day and someone he, punches him and he's like wait and then he wakes up that didn't hurt yeah <laughs> <laughs> that didn't hurt and then he wakes up and then uh yeah that'd be a really fucked up and then he like offs himself you know because a lot of like just reason, to give it a fucked ending like he like offs exactly himself he just like, he doesn't know yeah because he knows it won't be nearly as good as what he had in his dream man that would be fucked up that let's be, do it let's do that <laughs> yeah, all let's right get that movie going on let's do it I'm evan can be the main character i'm gonna have to oh, cut God. all of that because i don't want anyone knowing of that I, i'm just kidding <laughs> true it's all copyright true. no wait trade no copyright copyright yeah, it's copyright. an copyright. idea it's it's an intellectual idea. property all right um it's not actually copyright please make this movie jj <laughs> abrams please so, jj abrams i don't know abrams is a little occupied at the moment yeah star wars can wait well he's because he got kicked off of the seventh one, right? Or no, or he, he chose not to do it. No, he originally chose not to do nine, and yeah. then they actually brought him back on for it for an absurd amount of money because he had started a contract with another company because they just dropped whoever was going to do nine. Right, because so now J.J. Abrams or something. is. I don't know why, but well, so um, then why was he like? Because he did the Star Trek, and he's like, I don't want to do Star Trek because Star Wars is my passion, and then he does Episode Nine, and it, it's like financially a huge success what uh-huh. you know pending your opinions on how the movie turned out episode seven you said nine he did yeah he's, oh, he's done seven. You're good. You're, no, he has you're good. he has now done eight as well and then they just recently okay broke hold down. on wait, wait, wait. yeah go. so it's one two three four five six so seven and eight was done by a different director though was it I yeah that yeah they they did so he did seven and then eight was a different director and then eight he's hasn't come back. out yet to clarify right it's coming out this yeah, year yeah, yeah. right so a, eight was a different director and then um nine was that director but some bullshit happened and he got fired and now, and and now, now abrams they, is back yeah and he was back but why did he originally leave though that's my question and i was and so if you don't I, know i don't know okay. the answer to that because it's like why leave if you're just gonna get roped back into it got the information evan uh, Star Wars: The Last Jedi is directed by Ryan Craig Johnson. Yeah. Okay. I have never heard that name. Right. Yeah, and then the the nine episode nine, whatever it's called, will is going to be Abrams. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Um. All right. So is it me or uh, it, or is it me? Of course it's me. Um. Is it shitty or whenever uh you're driving and you see an accident on the road, you get really irritated and really pissed off because they didn't die in the accident and they just their car got. Uh, wrecked a little bit and that's it but the whole thing takes up three lanes and it slows down traffic and now i'm 30 minutes late to work is it shitty that i hate the person for it um kind kind of how you framed it is a the, the way the way you framed it sounded question. pretty shit for saying oh they're not dead this sucks that's kind of yeah. what it sounded like fine I, I, let I me the, rephrase I, it no no, I, no, no I, we, we understand i think i get the idea where like the situation is not grievous enough to warrant taking up three lanes of traffic. Right. Is basically what you're getting at. Like, and like I understand that. Like but... literally this morning, um, it was oh, this, <laughs> all of the, all of my topics are from this morning. I was just writing them all down. Um, but li- so, uh, we we're going North on Coit and we we're going to, uh, enter George Bush to head to work. And so this intersection, it's never really a busy intersection except for when shit happens on the road. And so all I see is this like a uh, 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 f- uh, fire truck and then like a police car and then two of the uh, citizen cars, whatever, pa- whatever, passenger vehicle cars. And the only damage was that the front bumper of one car was off of the car and they were taking up like <laughs> fucking there was maybe like one lane and then you had to like wor- swerve around the second lane. I don't and understand just- how wrecks are that bad to warrant needing police and paramedics and all that. Because like, I mean, honestly, I got into I, I got into a fender bender um, this year. Mm-hmm. I was on my way home from work and I was impatient to get home. I forgot to look back in front of me before going and I hit a dude in the back and my front bumper is pretty fucked up. Mm-hmm. His had some scratches, but literally I stepped out of my car. I said, hey, man, stressful day. I'm sorry about that. Let me get your insurance info. And that was it. It took five minutes. Like, okay. so I don't you, know. I don't understand how it gets so prolonged. The police, I think, come because obviously you can get heated. I mean, on the highway, it's different, I think, though, because yeah. that wasn't on the highway. Well, well, it sounds it, like this was just on. Yeah, this is on Coit. Oh, just okay. Well, then, yeah, yeah, I have no yeah, clue. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that you didn't like. If there was a fire truck there, I'm thinking you probably didn't see the whole wreck. Maybe would I don't be know. my guess. I don't, I don't know for sure. I wasn't. I wasn't there. Sure, but um, yes, he was. Because <laughs> well, even even then, I'll give an, I'll do, give a different example. Um, we were on 75, and uh, there was it was a big ass pedo van, and it was a s- small SUV. 
and the pedal van hit the back of the SUV and that was it. And there, I think there was a cop, maybe two or something, but again, they were still taking like two, maybe three lanes on 75 and it just caused this backup and it was just, yeah, it's bad, but it's like literally just take up one lane, maybe two. Sure. I get it. If you want to be safe on the road or just fucking your cars aren't damaged, just drive off of the highway. Like, yeah, exactly. Well, um, Depending on how hard the van hit the other guy is, um, it didn't look, front steering might have been fucked. It didn't look bad at all. I mm-hmm. but like, but, like my, but but the thing is, yeah. like my um, when I when I got into an accident, um, I, I hit the back of uh, this Honda Odyssey, and my Avalon went under the car, and my wow. Avalon was like the front the the front hood was just like fucked, and just everything was smushed. But I was still able to drive off into a parking lot yeah. and mm-hmm. settle it there. So it's like. You, the whole like there was fucking smoke and steam coming from the car but i still went off to the side of the road so i don't know and i mean that's potentially dangerous in that case it is no, it's and not. like the the funny thing is like if i exploded then my life would have been a whole lot better i'm just kidding go ahead <laughs> right it would have been a lot more over um that's true but isn't that what we're here for no more student kind of, loans yeah <laughs> exactly that's just kind of odd to me because like the the only accident i've been in i had a had a mustang hit like the it wasn't even that bad. I hit Wait, the- you had a Mustang or you hit a Mustang? Had a Mustang. Wow, you lucky son of a gun. Uh, it was a pretty old one. It was a pretty old one. Still, uh, Mustang's hit better the, than anything. Hit this, uh, hit like the corner of somebody's bumper with it, but it still actually like really fucked up my front axle. Really? So Damn. I it, like literally corner hit because somebody didn't know what a left turn lane was. Nice. Um, and I was still able to get it off the road, but like was thinking about driving it back for the back to my house because i was like three minutes away for the tow truck to come pick it up but right. it, it just wouldn't it was uh, just not wow yeah. okay so it, it's kind of it's a very situational thing in that regard it's very I don't difficult know. to tell just from at just at a glance what damage is actually done to the vehicle <sighs> all right well i don't know i just i still really hate it i, I mean I obviously if it's a drastic where, accident yeah. and there's like an ambulance and like people are getting carted off i'm not gonna complain i'm like oh shit wow i really but hope yeah, they're it, okay it is I, I don't disagree that it is like especially on a freeway or something it's really just it's so a annoying. lot of inconvenience for what the it's gravity of the situation so actually annoying. is it's just like you have now made me late to my appointment slash i had work, plans for the whatever, day work, yeah. whatever it is <laughs> and i'm just like if you're if you didn't break an arm, then like I hope you feel really bad. Like I don't know. It's just I I I, I a lot a lot of the subjects for today. I just That's was like, fine. man, I hate when this happens. Man, this thing happened to me today. Um, now that we're done with that topic, is yeah. it okay if we take a quick break? Uh, yeah, sure. Stretch let's, break and whatnot. Uh, let's take a break. Okay, uh, we will be back. Um, any closing remarks till the break? We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. It picked up where we left off. All right, we are back to the uh, One More Podcast podcast. Hey, I am your not host, Evan, and I on to our that. host, Yuval. I'm just, can I just, I'm just, you, I'm you just, hurt me. I'm just. You hurt me. You hurt me. You're going right. to copy okay. me what I say? You're going to copy me what I say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like an echo. It's like an echo. That's, you're hilarious. All right, anyways, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> um, we took a break. I had a piece of pie. We talked about religion. We talked about God um evan didn't have anything to say because he's a hardcore bleeding atheist and yeah you, you got me like, dude. he actually had more to say than i did just because that's true just... yeah dude if you believe in god you suck <laughs> Yo, no i'm just kidding hey, dude mad respect to I everybody in god. hey and that's okay hey, i respect yep. you for that because it makes you you're happy. treating me like i'm some kind of idiot hey that's okay it's okay hey, it's you... okay don't worry about it <laughs> honey it's all right <laughs> We have water now. Um, so we're going to talk about um, probably, I think we can, because I don't know, the, the, I think we've kind of gone across the spectrum on what we can talk about. And so I figured we can close with the uh, stories, because I'm just super interested in like what the fuck kind of people you've had. Are you really? I'm, yeah, I'm genuinely. Oh, man. Because like. I'm, oh, man. So here, let's, I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell just like one of my shitty stories. uh working at target mobile and then you can you know Take do the a big floor. the big finale great um <laughs> so uh one time um oh, okay so i i have i have a select handful of stories but uh one time um and this was probably i was still relatively new 
I maybe you've been working just like maybe three or four months. Um, okay, what? A dope. All right. Um, Evan is on Snapchat again because he is a. I'm an whore. addict. He's a. Hey, uh, I'm I'm free advertising for uh, uh, my uh, my not hosted podcast. That's true. Um, I re- real quick. I really love Danny DeVito. You guys have watched Sunny in Philadelphia? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> I love whores. I'm the trash man. Trash man. <laughs> I gotta go find me some whores. <laughs> whores. Uh, the best. The best is when they do. Oh, I dropped my monster the condom dog. from my magnum <laughs> <Monster> dong. dong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Best one is when they do the play for Dayman, and he's like, "You gotta play, pay the troll <laughs> toll to get <laughs> into the, the boys' hole." <laughs> wait, 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 Frank, Frank. What? What are you saying? You You have to say boys. Soul. That's what I'm saying. Boys hole. Well, no, no, no. It's, it sounds like you're saying boys, boys hole. No, no, I'm saying boys soul. See, you gotta pay the, the troll toll to get into the boys hole. No, Frank! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that show is... It is really good. That show is amazing. Um, anyways, back to the work, work story. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna, like, tangent, tangent, and build and uh-huh. ourselves yeah. into a trench again. Um, anyway, so... Um, as I talked about on last podcast, uh, there are really shitty people out there who try and scam for phones and they have freak, freak, fake identification, fake credit cards, fake whatever bullshit to prove that they are who they say they are, even though they're not. Um, so in this one example, super, super, super sketchy, like probably 30, 20 to 30 minutes before we were about to close and I was about to wrap everything up, comes in really fucking sketched like this lady had like i don't want to say super raggy clothing but definitely like you know she may or may not have found them like and the next to a garbage can or somewhere worn them yeah. for weeks exactly super super sketch and um she seemed really nervous and it was like just red flags all over the place was yeah. just immediately popping up um and so we uh, went through, and again, um, as I clarified before, you can't outright deny anyone. You can't mm-hmm. say, hey, I'm not going to sell you a phone because then you know they can sue you for whatever BS reasons. But there are things that you can do to make it harder for them, and you can make it so that it's more of an inconvenience for them, or mm-hmm. they have to do extra steps, and then they'll just say, fuck it, whatever. So um, Immediately, like I said, red flags, and um, I'm going through the system, and I'm doing the clues and the cues to set those red flags. Um, one thing, she had a photocopied, uh, a a photocopy of her social security number, which I don't even think you can. Is that legal to have a You're photocopy? You're not supposed to. Yeah. So um, that was the thing, and um, it was just that was that was sketch number one. Um, sketch number two, she didn't have any debit card or credit card or any other driver's license or anything. She no had like ID. a membership to a thing that had her picture on it, I think. And it's like, because they always teach us, it's like, or they teach us, but like, Evan, in your wallet, what do you have in your wallet? You have I have credit my, card slash debit card. I have my debit card. I have my driver's license. Driver's license. I have a couple of random, you know, membership sure. cards. That'll but, have your name on it as yeah. well. Okay. Yeah, but it's all my S- stuff. Sure. Yeah. Same with you, Evan, as well. Same deal. Yeah. I, and for me, I've got three credit cards, drive my driver's license, and I got a student ID. So yeah. it's like, or actually, I still, two, I, yeah, I still have my student ID. In right. There too. So two two credit cards and a debit card. Sorry. But anyways, so it's like a regular person who's not up to good or not up to not good. A regular person will always have that on them. You yeah. Know? Nine times out of ten, you're if you're going to go get a phone, you're gonna to want to have all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. so anyways, red flags, red flags, red flags. And so in the system I made it so that they had to call for a secondary authentication and something. And I think she was giving me a sketch address or something like that. It was like a P.O. box or some BS that she tried to make it not seem like I don't remember. But um so so what happened was um, I called on the phone to do this secondary authentication and stuff yeah. like that because it's been flagged for suspicious activity. And I was yeah. trying to be calm and explain, hey, I'm going to need to call this number because whatever. And she was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Just did whatever. She was more just yeah, focused. Give me my phone. Yeah. yeah she, she, it seemed like she was going to get the phone, so she was going to wait. So I put the phone. And me being the idiot, um, I had the volume on my phone a little bit higher than I probably should have. And uh, she was literally right next to me listening to the phone call. And so uh, when the operator, because it was like through a third party that was partnered with us. And so they're yeah. like, okay, is this person, suspe- do you suspect suspicious activity? And I said, yes. And then uh, answered a few other questions. I hung up and she was like, I heard what you said about them. Why are you saying that I'm doing suspicious activity? What are you, a racist? 
uh, she was African American, but red flags all over other than that. Um, and she was literally going to bite my head off, yelling me, telling she's going to sue Target, sue uh, sue Target Mobile, whatever BS. She didn't get her phone. She wasn't approved. So obviously I couldn't give her the phone. No. And so she talked to the manager and like the uh, the asset protection guy, AP, came. And mm-hmm. she was like screaming and yelling and causing this whole ruckus. And I was just like, look, okay. For, and obviously I didn't tell her this, but like, yeah. look, you get denied from a phone – if you were above board and you were just a regular Joe, you're not going to react this way just to get denied. You're going to exactly. like wait the 24 hours, come back, and then you know do it deal again. with it Actually, later, like an adult next time. Right, yeah. exactly. So, um, but she was yelling, screaming, cussing at me, and she was threatening me, and I was legitimately scared to go to my car because it was like. I think this was like eight or nine whenever we closed and it was already dark outside and she was threatening me directly. Yeah. And, um, the asset protection guy had to come in and tell her to calm down, blah, 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 whatever. She left in a huff and side, side note, I never saw her ever again. Um, definitely didn't come back. And I actually think I can't, I don't remember if it was her, but someone else in a similar experience, they went to a different target and they were again denied because (laughs) of their bullshit stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah, that was that was a pretty crazy story because uh, not that a sane, nuts, yeah. rational person is going to yell and cuss at you and threaten to kill you yeah. and shit. I actually, uh-huh. now that I think about it, I do have one that there is... Did you talk about work on a similar thing a couple days ago? Because there's a decent chance Alex already gave you this story. Oh, go ahead. But um, it was around Christmas time last year. No, he hasn't said anything okay. about that. Okay, gotcha. Uh, we were on the floor. We were uh, just, just kind of cleaning everything up, getting ready to close. Mm-hmm. and we have our, our Christmas trees on display, right? And we find a set of lights out of the box plugged into one of our power strips, which the the idea is obviously that whoever was there was trying to test out the lights, right? Right. But they left the plastic on the packaged lights. Okay. Which is about 18 different kinds of a fire hazard. Sure. We were we were very distraught when we found this because we were we were like half certain the place was going to burn down. <laughs> so we were just kind of ranting ranting at each other for the rest of the evening. Uh anyone who wants to test light bulbs or anything like that, make sure there's nothing flammable on them when you're lighting them up. <laughs> sure. This has been a public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, that story is nothing. Oh okay. That's crazy. <laughs> it's it's nothing crazy, but god. Okay. <laughs> call centers. Right. Have either of you ever worked in a call center? I'm about to. He's about to. You know? I have yelled at people who probably worked at a call center. For me, don't do that. No, like, honestly, it's like, I, the, in this example, real quick, um, I've been getting a call. Okay. I don't think it was a call center, but it, there was a certain period of time where my dad bought a new car. Yeah. And um, uh, for whatever reason... My name has been listed on shit that my mom's been signed up for and shit that my dad's been signed up for. And so I get a call. It's like, hello, we're talking, we're calling because your uh, warranty is about to expire and want to extend your warranty, blah, blah, blah. And is this Stephen Parker, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, no, stop calling. We don't want warranty. Okay, bye. Then like a few days later, hi, we're calling about warranty, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Stop calling. <laughs> bye. And then it got to a point, I think they probably called me six or seven times, and at the at that point, I was just like, literally, I said straight up, fuck you, stop calling me, hung up. Because I knew it was them, I recognized the number, so uh-huh. um, there's definitely... Let's see, that that's different, though. Okay. Yeah. If you're, like, calling in about, like, like if you're calling customer service, just be nice. Oh, sure. oh no, I'm super yeah. nice. Okay, and just, I'm, I'm just no, telling yeah. you from someone who works in it. If you are nice to someone mm-hmm. that you're speaking to in customer service, I guarantee you they will go the extra mile to get oh, your shit sure, done. Oh, sure, of course. <clears throat> Absolutely. Of course. And see, here's the thing about working in a call center is it's hopefully not where I'll be the rest of my life. That is not my intention. Sure. I It pays fairly well, mm. and it's not the worst job. I don't have a lot of stuff to do whenever it's – whenever people don't call in, I don't have to do anything. I can sit there and browse Reddit on the internet. It's sure. fine. Now, you always get – for me at least, there's two types of different escalations. Now, an escalation is when something isn't going a member's way mm-hmm. and they want to speak to a supervisor. Or basically, they're at the point where they are fed up and they're just, they want to get it done. Sure. So, there's type A, which... Okay, there, there's three There's three different types. There's type right. A. Type A is a nice person. Okay. They, they call in 
we made a genuine mistake on their account and they just want to get it fixed and they're not being rude. They're, sure. they're calm. They're collected. They just say, could you please help me fix this? Right. Okay. Awesome. I will go the extra mile. I'll go the extra two miles for you to make sure that that gets done because you're a decent human being. Sure. Then you get type B, which is the person that if something's not done correctly, yells your ear off, calls oh. you names, whatever. A huge jump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, those people I'm okay with too. Okay. Because they're just mad. They're just frustrated. Sure. And they don't know how to handle their frustration. And that's okay. fine with me. It's it's annoying to deal with. And there are... it's. But they're, they're, they'll still work with you? The, yeah, they're annoying to deal with. And they are frustrating to talk to. But at the end of the day, they don't want to be on the phone as much as you don't want to be on the phone. Sure. And then there's type C. Okay. Now type C are the people that ruin my day whenever I get them on the phone. Damn. Because they are those kinds of people that call you... Not just because there's a problem, but because they want to prove you wrong at every corner. Wow. They want to call you out on everything. They're gonna they they are those people that pull up the terms and conditions oh. before they make the phone call. They read through it. They oh. check like they're like the like the people who be, should be a lawyer but didn't study. Oh no. Yeah. Oh. Now see these people are my favorite and my least favorite. Okay. They're my least favorite because I hate their attitude, but they're my favorite because I love being a smug son of a bitch back to them. Okay. Now, just for a couple example calls. These are all um, type Cs? These are majority, yeah. Okay. Majority. Um, now, some of these are hilarious. Some of these are just frustrating. The first one's probably my favorite story. All right, go for uh, it. This guy calls in, and we handle a lot of uh, dental insurance type stuff. Sure. So he calls in, and he goes, you know, you know, thank you for calling member services. My name is Evan. How can I help you today? Right. Oh, hey there, Evan. How you doing today? Your dude seems pretty nice. And I'm like, oh, I'm not doing too bad. You know, how about you, sir? And he goes, oh, I'm doing just fine. Uh, here's my ID number. Could you pull up my account? Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Just verify your information. Blah blah blah. Done. Um, now here's what I'm calling about, Evan. I just I need you to send this information over to my dental office. And I'm like, well, sir, actually, the dental office, in order to get this information, they have to call us. Oh, okay. And we give that information over the phone directly to the office. And he pauses. Doesn't say, probably about 15, 20 seconds of just dead silence. Dude doesn't say anything. Okay. And finally, he goes, <clears throat> he goes, now tell me, son, do you have arms and legs? And I, I'm dumbfounded. Okay, yeah. I'm dumbfounded. And I'm like, what, what do you mean, sir? And he goes, well, tell me, do you have arms and legs? And I'm just here, like, trying not to laugh at this absurd question. And sure. I'm like, well, yes, sir, of course I do. And he goes then why the fuck can't you fax my information over? And I, and like, and like literally this is like, he goes from calm to complete <laughs> douchebag in about 0.3 seconds. Oh my God. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, sir. I just, you know, I don't have the authorization to do that. I don't I don't want to get in trouble over this. And he right. goes, and he goes, well, and he, he calms back down. Sure. And he goes, well, tell me, son, are you tied to your chair? <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just like no sir i'm not why and he goes because if you're not tied to your chair then you should get the fuck up and go fax my information over <laughs> and so here i am sitting in the corner of the office and i look over to my supervisor and i mute my phone and i'm like hey ryan can you please start listening to this call and he's like yeah and he's like why and i'm like just just do it just do it and so i get back on the phone and i'm like unfortunately sir you know, I really don't mean to be an inconvenience. I know I just... Sure. It has to being, come... You're being the nice guy. Yeah. And it's it's literally not something I can do. Like, it's, it's out of my reach to do this for him. Sure. So I'm like, sir, I really do apologize. I can provide you the phone number. I can give you the ID number for your plan. That's all they need. Mm -hmm. Take five seconds. Give them a call. Have them call, have, have them call us. We'll take care of it. You know, sure. that's their responsibility. Sure. And <laughs> he goes, well, son... I don't understand why you can't get up and fax my goddamn information over because saying that you don't have the authorization. And I'm like, well, sir, it's not it's not something I'm allowed to do. And he goes, of course it is. This is America. <laughs> <laughs> and at that moment, I was just like, wait, hold on one second. Like this dude, he's like, he's like, I fought for your rights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This dude's like, I fought for your rights. You're able to get up and do whatever the fuck you want in this great country. And I'm like... 
Yes, sir, I understand that. But if I want to keep a job and make sure I can pay my bills, I can't get up and just do these things. Oh, my God. And and at that point, that's what I literally said to him. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like you can get through to these kind of people. Right. Mm-hmm. And he finally gives up. Finally, oh, um, yeah, okay, well, I'll give him a call. And, I'm, you know, I say, well, was there anything else I could do for you? Oh, you didn't do shit. And just hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> and just hangs up. Now, see, that's that's the kind of story... Where, as frustrating as it is during that moment, sure. as soon as I hung up the call, I threw on my, I threw myself onto a scheduled break, and I just started dying. That's oh, awesome. at my desk, I That's was just, awesome. I was cracking up. My supervisor next to me, fucking cracking up. <laughs> yeah. So. That's kind of the the funny aspect of these people of these of what I call these type C people who think sure. they're smarter than you. Sure. And you know they very well may be smarter than me, but they're not smarter than me about the plans that I worked with for two years now. Right. Like at this point, I know that shit like the back of my hand. I could give you a full insurance breakdown right now. I'm not sure. going to because it takes forever, sure. but I could. Separate podcast. Yeah. Evan, of course. Evan's corner. <laughs> of course, of course, as the not host. Um, hour, hour with. Evan. So, then we move on to the probably the. The most, and this this isn't like a regular frustration from for the, for this next call. Mm-hmm. It's more of a dumbfounded frustration where it's just like someone says something so bizarre and out there that you're just like this. This is pissing me off because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay. So, dude calls in. This is for a vision insurance that we work with. Wait, hold on, real quick. How sure. many of these insane calls are men versus women? I'm just curious. All of my insane calls are men. Really? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I have, I've had, I have had a couple of women who have been very uh, rude and actually I, actually I do have a story now that I think about it. Evan's dying for those Sorry. auditory listeners. Got some, uh, <clears throat> canes and digestion going on over here. <laughs> gotcha. Let me grab a sip of water. This is some great content. You want to <sighs> give us a burp? No. Aww. Um, so next story. Dude calls in, wants to cancel his program. Policy mm-hmm. on this program is once you're out of your 30-day trial period, can't cancel till the next year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if you start January 1st, 2017, mm-hmm. once you're past January 31st, you are locked into that plan until January 1st of 2018. I mean, there's no cancellation legal? There's, basically, it states in the terms and conditions that it is a full-year program, mm-hmm. and, that one, and that whether you pay it monthly or yearly, you are paying for the full year. Oh, okay, sure. And so this only really comes into play. So ba- basically, they're able to submit for an early cancellation. They okay. can submit for that by mail, email, or fax. Sure. I can provide them that information over the phone. Uh-huh. I just can't submit it because then I get in trouble. Right. Um, but basically, and it really comes down to just a nitty-gritty for half a second. If you've used your benefits, we cannot cancel it for you because at that point, you have used your benefits and we need to make sure you make all your payments right. so that we get paid. Sure. Otherwise, people would call in, use their benefits, and just cancel. And then we're losing money. That's not how insurance works. Right. Insurance is straight up as good as it is. It is there to make money. Sure, of course. That's a separate conversation for you now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, dude calls in. I want to cancel my vision plan. Oh, well, yeah, I'd be more than happy to look into that for you. You know, what's your ID number, blah, 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 verify, everything, all that shit. And I look at the plan and I notice it's, okay, February 1st, 2017 is when this started. It's probably April or May at this point. Mm. And I'm like, okay, sir, well, at this point, unfortunately, I'm not able to cancel that over the phone, but I can provide you our information if you'd like to submit a written request. Mm -hmm. And he goes, okay, sure. And, you know, usually people get really mad when I tell them that. Oh, okay. Because people don't like being told they can't do something. Of course. Mm -hmm. And while we don't word it that way, a lot of people get it really quickly that Mm -hmm. I'm... That I'm basically telling them, no, I can't take your credit card off file. Right. No, I can't cancel your plan. We're still going to charge you. Right. And I can understand from an outsider perspective how frustrating that is. Sure. But you signed up for it. You should have read it. Right. It's your, your responsibility. Yeah. As mm-hmm. a consumer. Um, but anyway, so the dude's okay with it. He's like, okay, sure. Um, you know, how can I send this in? And I said, oh, we can do mail, email, or fax. And he hears the word fax, and he just, like, he, like, doesn't process it. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, what? what's fax but really and i'm like uh like a fax machine and he goes yeah what's that uh. and so here's me on the other end just being like what just how do you not know what a fax machine is and i, I didn't say that but i'm sitting sure, here just sure. like like you know squinting my eyes fucking frustrated just like wait what <laughs> and so i literally <laughs> i literally 
pull up Google and type in define fax machine. Yeah. And I read it to him. Oh, really? Yes. I read that to him over the phone. And he goes, oh, like those things they used in the 80s? <laughs> and I'm like, not just in the 80s, sir. I mean, these still get used every day right. with big corporations. Sure, and he sure. go, and this is the part where it started to piss me off. He goes, well, I run a company with 2,500 employees and we don't use a fax machine. <laughs> and I'm just here like, like internally, I'm like, honestly, sir, I don't give a fuck if you use a fax machine or not. <laughs> But just because your company doesn't use a fax machine doesn't mean they don't exist. Like, yeah. like how are you self-aware? <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> and so I keep going over it with him and he's just like, and so we finally get over the fact that this dude doesn't know what a fax machine is. And he's like, okay, give me the email. Sure. Give him the email address. Mm -hmm. And he goes, okay, cool. You know, I'll send this in today when I get home from work. And I'm like, awesome. Sounds good. And I'm like, anything else I could do for you? And he goes, no. And then I just like, as he's like taking the phone away from his face, mm -hmm. I just hear in the background, I just hear, hey, honey, these guys use a fax machine. <laughs> and, wow. I'm, and, and, and I'm just like, what the <laughs> fuck? And wow. like, once again... As soon as the call's over, lean over to my supervisor. Hey, Ryan, this douchebag's never heard of a fax machine before. <laughs> God damn, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you get some really dumb people. Um, now, are these just, like, you, you have them because you've built them up over time, but are these, like, isolated? Or is it, like, every other day you're going to get at least one fucker? I haven't actually had someone who has been outright rude to me in quite a while. Oh, okay. Because I'm at the point where I've perfected my customer service voice and i know sure. exactly what to say because i worked in our quality assurance department for a couple months so uh -huh. i was listening to calls and grading calls sure um so i know what to do correctly in order to make sure the member's happy sure so like let's say you call in bring bring, first bring. Thing, yeah first Hello. thing you're gonna hear i would like to cancel my oh now, see first thing you're gonna hear oh okay as soon as the bring 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 Thank you for calling member services my name is evan how can i help you today uh yes i would like to cancel my insurance well, sure. I'd be more than happy to help Hold you out on, with that. Sir, I don't appreciate this pandering tone. Can you just talk like a normal human being to me? Yeah, sorry about that. I'd be more than happy to help you cancel your plan. Okay, Would you happen you. to have your ID number? Uh, I do have my ID number. Yeah, so that, that's exactly like, that's like, I'm, I'm at the point where even though I do have that pandering, obnoxious tone, that's what people sure. want to hear when they call in. Of course. <clears> they I it. don't. Neither do I. Don't pander to me. That's what the majority of people like to hear. Is they like to hear someone who loves their call center job. And that's what old people they like They live to hear. for it. Yeah, but we get majority old I people. Mean, uh, it's yeah. dental insurance, dude. That's true. It's <laughs> mainly old people. That's true. Um, But to move on to... I have, I have two more stories. First one's short. Go for it. Lady Lighting calls story. in. Lady calls in. This is the same kind of vision insurance that you can't cancel unless you're at a you specific time. You just said time. you do dental insurance. Now you're doing vision? We do dental and vision. We okay. were Yeah, I know it's a combo pack. Yeah, well, we have like a brief brief product placement. I'm not going to actually say any names. Though, I don't care. <laughs> hey, buy um, our insurance. No, don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we work with dental discounts, which are a little bit different from insurance, but that's our main product that our company came up with. Mm -hmm. And then from there, other companies said, hey, you guys are good at making stuff up and, you know, you're good at like, you know, what you do. Can we outsource our products to you? So we said, sure. So we work with a lot of different products because we outsource for a lot of call centers or sure. for a lot of companies. Like we work with Aetna. We work with Cigna. We work with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Like, VSP? Yeah. VSP is the vision insurance. Yeah. Okay. So I have VSP. Really? Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't work with the employer plan. Sure, though. sure, sure. Yeah. I only work with individual stuff. But Okay. Lady calls in, VSP Vision Program. Hi, I'd like to cancel and get a refund. Okay, let me see what I can do for you. Pull up the account, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you, you'd, you'd have to submit this in writing. And she goes, well, I don't understand. You know, why can't I just cancel it and get a refund for all my payments at any time? And I'm like, okay, well, well, hold on. Like, like, where can you do that? <laughs> like, where can you just buy a plan and, you know. Cancel and get a refund. At any time. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So she keeps going on about it, going on, going on, going on, going on. And I'm like, okay. And it's at the point where it's just getting really frustrating. I, I, she keeps saying, cancel and refund. And I'm like, unfortunately, ma'am, submit in writing. Cancel and refund. Unfortunately, ma'am, submit that in writing. Cancel and refund. And I'm just like, okay. And I'm like, ma'am, I can provide you with the written information if you'd like. But unfortunately, that's all I'm able to do. Is there anything else I can help you with today? And she goes, well, y'all crack your ass, better refund my money for me. And just hangs up. <laughs> and I was, and I'm just here like. And I'm, I'm just here like, okay, that's not, I mean, it, technically, I guess it's a racial slur, but not, right, 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 it doesn't right. offend me, Sure. but I was, I just dumbfounded. Like, why, why is that okay? How can you, <laughs> why is that how okay? can you actually talk to someone and think it's okay to say these things? Like people think that I'm a robot. 
because you are a robot. So that beep boop. Um, so that's just <laughs> that's just another small story. Um, I actually have one line that I do where we are just an answering service. Mm-hmm. And so we just take messages. And I'm at the point where I can actually say that introduction so well, people will either just hang up or whenever they hear my voice, they'll say, oh, you're not a robot. Wait, wait like, like, so what would you say? Thank you for calling our answering service. Unfortunately, we are closed for the day. Could I leave a message? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and That's it's at good. the point where where either I'll just hear them like hang the phone up, or they'll be like, "Hello," and I'll be like, "Yes, ma'am," and they'll be like, "Oh, you're a person," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, ma'am." Can I leave a message? And I just keep saying it until sure. they fucking hang up. Um, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, but here's the last story. Here's the story that is my firm excerpt of why you shouldn't work in a call center. Okay. Sorry. No, it's all good. <laughs> I've had okay. an idea of what I was getting into. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, horror, I've told you all these. Horror uh-huh. stories, PTSD. All right, here's the here's the horror story. Uh, there's a specific line that this is on for a dental insurance program that we had just started working with, mm-hmm. and we and like literally the first one of these plans we even have enrolled for is June of last year. So that's not old at all. Right. He's taking a sip of water. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Watch. Me. But Watch me. after I took this call, every time I would see that pop up on my phone my heart rate would increase because I, w- I honestly thought it's this guy calling back to yell at me again. Oh, okay. yeah. No, this guy was honestly a ruthless, ruthless person. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, and I can guarantee you if it was in person, he would have never said anything like this. Sure. But <clears throat> cause he has the, this is mask of the phone. This is over two separate calls that happened within the, within the same hour. Okay. <clears throat> he calls at around. So th- at this time I was getting off at 7 PM. Okay. First call starts around 6 p.m. He calls in and he goes, hey, I have a question about my plan, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, can I get your policy number? And he goes, yeah, I entered it into the system. And I said, unfortunately, it didn't pop up for me. Can I get your policy number, sir? And he goes, well, this is ridiculous. It's like, I'm not going to give you my policy number. And I'm like, what the, what the? and I'm, I'm over here like, sir, that's what it's for. Like, that's literally why we give you a policy number. Yeah. But he's like, okay, fine. Here's my policy number. And I'm like, okay, could you also verify your name and date of birth, you know, for HIPAA security reasons? And he goes, this is ridiculous. And he's like, I'm going to call back. And he hangs up right and i'm like okay and i i actually pulled up my skype for business pulled up my supervisor and said hey man this dude just called in and he is very pissed off and i do not know why i just wanted to give you a warning okay and i said you will most likely be receiving an escalated call at some point tonight and it's going to be this guy here's the id number sure and and i'm like okay cool so that happens around six Uh uh-huh shit you not 657 three minutes before i get off Wow. It pops up on my phone. Dun, 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 dun. Answer yeah. the phone. Thank you for calling. My name is Evan. How can I help you today? Oh, it's you again. And at this very moment, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and, I, and I'm sitting here, and I was counting down the seconds until 7. Right. And I'm like, I'm going to be here until 7 fucking 30, because this dude is <laughs> not going to leave me alone. It's like he knows. Yeah. It's like he knows I'm supposed to go home right now. <laughs> so... He goes, oh, it's you again. And I'm like, yes, sir. How can I help you? And he starts uh, explaining his issue. And I'm like, okay, well, can I get your policy number? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, sure. He goes, it's 1111. And that's four ones if you don't know how to fucking count. And I'm just like, what? (laughs) And I'm sitting here like, what the fuck, man? And honestly, even though this is something you're not supposed to do in a call center, I stopped him. And I was like, sir. I would very much appreciate that you do not speak to me in that tone. I am doing my best to help you out. Sure. Now, typically, you do not speak to people like this. No. Because he's he's fucking at you. He's using the fuck It just pisses them off. And with our call center, you're not allowed to hang up on people for any reason. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So if someone calls in and they're just fucking going off on you, you can't hang up. You got to listen. Damn. Yeah. You got to sit there and fucking deal with it. Damn. And so he's complaining about this plan. And basically... I don't know if you guys know, but most dental insurances have a waiting period, which basically means there's a certain, um, like for certain procedures, you may have to, you have like a 12 month waiting period before we cover those. Sure. And this is for all dental insurances. It's not just us. Mm -hmm. Every dental insurance that you're not getting through your employer, if you're purchasing it individually, Mm -hmm. will have a waiting period. Sure. Now on certain plans like this one, you can have it waived, which is just where you have to submit proof that you had insurance for at least 12 months. Okay. Water time. Hold on. So, do 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 do
Dude. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so, this guy is pissed off about his waiting periods, and I yeah. said, okay, sir, well, I can go ahead and, you know, submit a request for us to email that out to you, and he goes, cool, you know, let me have it right now, and I'm like, uh, unfortunately, sir, that goes through a certain department, and they send it from there, and he goes, no, you send it right now, and I'm like, sir, I'm not able to do that. Wow. And, like, he just, he ke- he keeps getting louder and louder wow. and he's calling me names he's calling me an idiot he says no oh. i don't, don't know how to do my job at oh. one point he tells me i'm not a human no <laughs> yeah i'm dead ass serious man this wow. guy complete piece of shit yeah and it's like probably 7 20 at this point okay i've been on this call for 23 minutes this dude's really like i have a headache i'm at the point <laughs> where I'm about to just like go off on this guy, hang up the phone and quit my job. Like I'm right. literally at that point where sure. I'm just like, this isn't worth it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so at this point, the closing supervisor, who's the only person left in the building besides me is listening to the call. Mm-hmm. And she's just uh, talking to me on Skype about it, you know, giving me advice on what to say. Mm-hmm. And, oh, this dude just kept going and going verbal, abuse, verbal abuse, verbal abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, just straight up all sure. of it. Just like, like, holy shit, you, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's terrible. Um, and at one point, my supervisor's just like, just lie to him. Just tell him we'll send it to him right now, hang up, and we'll close. And I'm like, no, I mm-hmm. can't do that. Yeah. I'm not going to jeopardize my my scoring on this call because they are going to listen to this call because it was such a big deal. Sure. So I know that if they go back and listen to it, and they they're see that I gave the wrong yeah. information, they're going to call me out on it, I'm going to get in trouble. I won't lose my job, but I'll get in trouble. It's sure. not fucking worth it. Right. So I keep explaining to him, and it's at the point literally now where, like, he would he would be yelling, and then he would stop for about half a second, and I'd, and I'd be like, "Yes, sir," but I can, and he'd be like, "No, no," wow. and he'd be like, "You're gonna send this to me right now. I need this right now. You do not understand how important I am." And I'm just like, "Sir, please, wow, like, please just listen to me for five seconds." And I have my supervisor in one ear telling me what to do. I have this dude yelling in the other, and Damn. I'm just I'm sitting here like trying to keep my calm with yeah. this guy, and eventually. He just hangs up after, after probably 35, almost 40 minutes of this. It's like seven 35 at this yeah. point. The dude finally just fucking hangs up. Wow. And I'm like, really? Like all of that. And you're just going to give up and hang up the phone. Wow. Like, you, that's it. Well, obviously he's going to call again tomorrow. Oh yeah, he did. Oh, um, he, he did. actually, for the backstory on or the, the, uh, the oh, epilogue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next day he called back in and did the same thing to another representative. And the day after that, he did it again. Wow. So we actually got in contact with our with our first party on this, the person who's actually outsourcing the plan to us. <clears throat> and we explained the situation. And this went up to our CEO and the CEO of MetLife. Oh. Like, it was this big at this point. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. It went to the CEO. Fuck. And they said, okay, cancel his plan. Tell him he can never work with MetLife again. Wow. Yeah. Dude's plan got canceled. Uh, uh, our quality assurance team went through and listened to every single call he ever made to us. Yeah. Um, every single call was downright verbal abuse. Sure. I actually got, uh, I was talking to one of the QA representatives after it happened, and he goes, hey, man, good job with that guy. He goes, like, if, if I were you, I would have hung up the phone on him. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and I, and I was like, trust me, I, I, I I wanted to. Sure, like, sure. Like, I really wanted to. Damn. But yeah, dude ended up getting his plan canceled. No refunds. <clears throat> um, any any claims that he had, we did not pay on. All of it's out of pocket for him at that point. Yeah. And the dude ended up just fucking himself hard because he didn't want to wait 12 hours to get a piece of paper. Damn. Yeah. Something someone cool. someone got that upset over a piece of paper. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Call Center Life, it's... it's Realistically, it's a great job. I mm-hmm. love my coworkers. Um... It's it's a very family place at the sure. call center we work at, and it's very relaxed compared to other call centers. Mm-hmm. But there are days where it's just like, man, I would rather be dead than take this call right now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, those are just my bad stories. Everyone has their own. Um, like, real quick tangent. One of my coworkers had a dude call in for the same vision program, mm-hmm. wanted a refund, Sir, unfortunately, I can't give you a refund on that. Okay. Uh, and the guy goes, okay, well, I need your first name, your last name, your employee ID number, and your social. What? Yeah. He <laughs> literally, and this is this is Casey. Yeah, yeah He yeah. literally goes, give me your social security number. And Casey's like, no, sir. I'm not going to give you my social. There would be no reason in this world I would need to give you my social. And he goes, okay, I'll come fight you for it. What? 
And the dude literally goes, can I have the address to your office in case he has to give it to him? Wow. And yeah. We have to give the address out because it's for billing purposes as sure. well. Um, but so he gives him the address and he goes, cool. I'll be there at seven. Are you dude, serious? Dude didn't, dude didn't show up. Oh, okay. Yeah. The dude lived in like San Antonio. He couldn't even, oh, even sure. if he wanted to, he wouldn't have made it in time. Sure. But like, oh man, I remember Casey got off the phone and he like, he like rolls over to my desk and he taps on it and he goes, Hey man, this dude just asked me for my social and then tried to fight me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm just over here like, wait, <sighs> what? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of funny stories. Um, there have been multiple people that have been completely blacklisted on our phone lines mm-hmm. because like we had one person who called in and they were yelling so loud that it didn't even sound like words. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like they're just like yelling to the point where they just it is yeah, yeah dude people are damn terrible and yeah, you really get the shit of the shit on yeah. the phones i i can understand that yeah because people people aren't afraid to be assholes on the phone well i th- I, I mean real, real quick i think we're gonna wrap it up but mm-hmm. uh you know i think that's the same thing on the internet and because i've def- i've definitely i've been uh I'll admit guilt to getting really pissed off at a representative while yeah. I was texting or like uh, typing on the phone. Um, similar situation. Again, I got pissed off, but I still ended up paying for it anyways. Um, and for school, real quick, for school, uh, we did, uh, we had to do some type of Photoshop or some BS, whatever, and we had to use the Adobe Suite. Okay. And so we had the student discount or whatever. And um, and so what, what, how I read it was you just do a month to month thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it's a year agreement paying month to month. I didn't realize this, yep. and I tried to cancel, and I was just like, "Look, I didn't fucking read. I didn't read it. Blah blah blah. Whatever. You've already you've already charged me for like two, three months or whatever. So you already have mm-hmm. some of my money. I just want to cancel, stop it, be done. Whatever, whatever." And this lady was just not helping me, and then I legitimately, in all caps, was just like saying. What the fuck do you mean you can't help me? Blah, blah, blah. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm a broke college student and you're trying to gouge me out. Blah, blah, blah. And, like, I feel really bad about it now. Yeah. But it's just, like, obviously, if we were face-to-face, I wouldn't have ever done that. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's, like, a, people just are not afraid to sure. be dicks whenever they're, they're you true, can't see their face. Their yeah. true <laughs> self comes out. I think is a lot easier because and, you don't have any repercussions. Yeah, and the the, re- the only reason that it really gets to me when people are rude to me is because I try my best to actually be a good employee. Like, sure. in that case that you just gave to me, if she wasn't trying to help you, then yeah, you should say something. I mean, there's not necessarily. Oh, it was just a straight up. The look you in your terms and agreement, you agreed to it. Sorry, you're shut out of luck. I'm not going to do anything for you. I was like, yeah, see, that's ridiculous. Right. Because there's uh, terms and conditions aside, there's always something you can do. Right. There is always something you can do to help a customer out. Yeah. And you know, we we do have people in our call center that don't apply themselves. Sure. Where you know someone will call in and they'll be like, "Thanks for calling member services. My name is Blank. How can I help you today? Hey, I'd like to do this. Oh, I'd be more than happy to help." And it's like obviously they're just monotone. Yeah. And they're they're, just, they're, they're just they're shit. just saying that so that they get a good score sure. on their call. Sure. But it's like. I can understand being pissed off at a representative if they lie to you or if they don't do their job. Like I called, I called frontier last year to get our internet set up. The dude said, yeah, we'll be out there on Saturday. Nobody showed up on Saturday. You bet your ass. I called back in and was mad. Like, because at that point I fucking put my plans aside to get this shit done. Right. Mm -hmm. And so at that point you're just flat out lying to me and it's disrespectful. I I think that's a different situation because it, it was an agreed upon contracts where, or not contract necessarily, but yeah. it was an agreed upon. It's a business. You're going to pay them money to do the service, and they didn't. They didn't fulfill their end of the bargain. Yeah. Whereas I think it's like if because you didn't fuck up in this situation. You're no. you're actively saying I want to give you money so you to provide me a service. They say, does this work for you? Yes, I'll make it work. Whatever, and they they fail for their end of the bargain. Whereas I think with call services and stuff like that, call centers. Usually I fucked up on something or I want to do something. Uh-huh. That a good half, a good 50 to 75% of it is the member's fault. Sure. <laughs> sure. Exactly. Sometimes it's the provider and sometimes we mess up too, but I mean, we're a corporation. Everything's automated. Sure. Yeah. So the chance of something messing up that bad mm-hmm. in our system, it's low. Right. Like, yes, every once in a while on your automatic payment, we may have processed the card wrong and there was an error, but we send you three emails. We give you a phone call. We let you know there was an error so you can call us and make it right. Sure. Like at that point... If we sent you three emails and we gave you a phone call and sent you a letter, yeah. we've done our part. Uh-huh. At that point, if your plan gets canceled because you haven't paid for it, mm-hmm. that's on you. 
Oh, yeah. No, like, I mean, just <clears throat> even today, for example, I got a text because I'm getting the new iPhone. Yeah. And so I got a text, and I, I see that, Evan. Um, and uh, <laughs> oh. um, so I got a text, and it was like, hey, there's a problem processing your order. And I gave him a call, fixed it in five minutes. And it's yeah. just like, done, done. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, it's not people, hard. People can be reasonable. Um, but anyways, on that note, people are shitty. Um, everyone's shitty. And life sucks, and we should all just be uh, mindless drones, uh, not causing problems for other people, right? We I mean, agree on that? Eh. I'm gonna go n- not mindless, but I think <laughs> overall people just need to be nice. Okay, you need to have respect for other man, um, so or women. Any any closing thoughts for anyone? I know Evan, we kind of shut you shut you in the shit. No, in the that's, last, like that's quite all right. Evan, you talked for like half an hour, I think probably yeah good good half an hour a while. y'all y'all got me on it man yeah, it's okay. the word it's right. uh, i'm gonna ooh. cut everything good yeah. <laughs> cut everything i said None except this will like just like day. like cut all of my words out and then rearrange them so i say some really fucked up shit That'd at the be end hilarious. that would be please don't do that <laughs> but um but yeah um any closing thoughts from you guys anything else well, I'm glad. Um, yeah, nothing really. Sorry. Right. I just no, want to say thanks for having us yeah, on the course. podcast. Thanks for having me again. Um, so, again. And thanks for having me for the first time. Yeah, it's all good. I'll definitely try and have you guys back on. Um, but, yeah, lightning round, um, que- giving a yes or no response, uh, no explanation, just to close it out. Okay. Um, when you sleep, do you sleep with fan on or off? On. Off, generally. On. All right. That's it, guys. I really it's appreciate it. I uh, <clears throat> hope you guys have a good night. And. We will be back on in the next episode. Yeah. I don't know when that will Thank be. Thank you for listening to the Sometimes. One More Podcast so podcast. One, one more I am podcast. your not host, Evan. Goodness this is gracious. your real host, you all. <laughs> all right. Peace out, everybody.